The swallow might yeah. make a little one. <laughs> That's a weird way to start it out, but you know what? That's it. We're rolling. It's all good. We'll, we'll That's just the start best way, there. man. So what's happening, guys? Uh, this is a first here on, which is going to probably have to be a conversation uh, mm -hmm. going from rated RR to full mag and everything. But welcome to the full mag podcast. Today I'm joined by Lou from Unbox Therapy, uh, Dom Esposito. Yep from uh, Mac Mixing and Austin Evans. Um, so you guys traveled a little bit to get here. Mm. What's, 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 what's going on, what brought you here, at LA Auto Show or? Yeah, at first, that, <laughs> that was the first obligation, but it was part of a larger trip. We tried to use that initial LA Auto Show trip to produce some more stuff, mm -hmm. including a show that we're gonna be doing that we haven't really talked about very much yet, but, Yes, but I can I can tell the people that uh, it's going to be very interesting, exciting, and it may or may not feature yourself. Oh well, I'm, I'm, it may or may not be uh, great to be, or have been, or maybe hypothetically. You can't confirm or deny. <laughs> you got that Glomar response ready to go at all times. But yeah, so real quick, I, people are going to be like, why is he jumping to this like so fast? There's so many things I could talk about between the like, guns and the channel and everything, but we, we, we've been pre-podcasting for like six hours now. That's true. It was like, by the time we get this whole setup ready to go, I was like, we're going to have nothing to talk about. But I don't care. You were talking about like the temperatures here in the grocery oh, stores. Oh, right. Or where we're, then we're I don't know. Canada. I think maybe I'm sensitive to it, to be honest with you. But I, everybody always seeks out perfect weather. It's like, oh, I wish I could live in California or wherever it might be. I, I am a fan of contrast. You yeah. see, I feel There's like... There's no seasons here. See, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I feel like if you have the cold, you appreciate the nice weather even more. Yeah. You know? You got to suffer a little bit to really know what's good. Yeah. Have you ever shoveled yeah, snow? Have you ever shoveled snow before? Um, like See, I can't trust a man that's twice never shoveled. In like <laughs> Jordan, we had like a blizzard, and in, in, it's so right. funny because everybody in, you're going to laugh. Yeah, I'm you're like, gonna blizzard. Laugh. You're going to laugh. <laughs> but like, so here's the thing. I grew up in North Georgia and Tennessee, and every, it's so funny. Every time that the weather forecast says, hey, look, there, there's going to be a flurry, everybody just like goes out, buys all the milk in the <laughs> right. store. They're getting bread. Right. I mean, you got like these 55-gallon drums of water. People are like just, just pulling crap out of everywhere. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, oh, my God, they bought all the gas at the gas yes. station. And uh, 93, we had what was like you would call probably a dusting in, in, in <laughs> Canada. It was our, our big blizzard. It, it, the, the problem is your infrastructure is probably yeah. set up more than ours. We don't have like uh, like T dot and stuff like that. It doesn't have a crazy surplus of salt or whatever it is, like bulldozers to help make the roadway. So it's, it's funny watching these people try to drive mm. that don't normally deal with it. I mean, it's like it, LA is another thing. It's like, it never rains here. Right. If it sprinkles outside, it's like you're watching Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> People just like, rah, bam, rah, just nobody knows what to, what to do. Yeah, nobody knows what to do. So yeah. we had like, I'd say like four, four feet of snow, something crazy well, like that's, that. That's, like, that's a fair bit of, like four feet? I don't know, like somebody's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. like here's four inches is one thing, four feet is a lot no, of no, snow. No, 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 like a cumulative over like a week I, or something, a, a week or something yeah. like and, that. I mean, here's the thing. I don't want to be editing this stuff, so I'm just going to talk out my ass. <laughs> so That's you the best way just, to podcast. You can yeah. rip me apart. Yeah. Here's the thing. I don't, I don't care if I have to admit I'm wrong mm. about something. So uh, you guys can look it up. The big blizzard in northwest Georgia. <laughs> Is that a, that's the landmark in history? Yeah, it, 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 I mean, it was crazy because I, I grew up on like a, a really kind of rural area, like on a farm. And um, we were out of power for, I want to say, two or three weeks. That's a and, long time. And we didn't have water for three days. So uh, as a kid, I'm just like, oh, this is cool. We're melting snow. And like, we're like <laughs> I'm going to take a bath in snow water and stuff like that. And my mom's like, no, we're having to melt this so you can take a crap you know, in there so we can pour it into the toilet and everything. But I, um, I'm, I'm straying here a little bit. I grew up in Arizona, so I, I, suffered, I suffered through the heat. I mean, oh, I'm, still, oh I'm still from Arizona. It's hot. Arizona's a different level. It's hot in there. Yeah. You know, last 115, time, 115, 120. 
Last time I was That's in suffering. Phoenix, I got the worst sunburn of my life. I almost died. <laughs> you, said really? you fell asleep in a pool, right? I fell asleep <laughs> on one of those floaty things. It wasn't, it, let me tell you something. It wasn't very long. It's like half an hour. No, it'll burn you. I woke up. I mean, you got sensitive Canadians. So skin, much yeah. pain. Like, uh, obviously, I'm not built for it, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah no. And I went upstairs. I'm like, I'm just going to go to bed and sleep this off. I woke up with such stiffness. I felt like my skin was ripping. Yeah. My back. So I went in the shower and put on the cold water, ice cold. And even though that was like getting shot, you know, with each little drop, it still was better than the alternative, which was <laughs> the burn. This yeah, is what, I mean, it's so cool cool outside. Outside. It feels the same, right? Yeah. Like, super yeah, yeah, yeah. hot is like really, really cold. At some point, that then, like, pain is similar. Yeah, and like cold will burn. Yes. But that's, that's You would cool. know about that. Mm, yeah, no. I guess. Sometimes, right. I mean, sometimes you get close to a flame and yeah, I mean, you get cold chills. The thing is, for me, it's like, yeah, it gets hot in Arizona, but when it's not hot, it's like it is outside right now every other day of the yeah. every other day of the year. Yeah. So it's like perfect, aside from like three, maybe four months, which is. But let's be miserable. let's be clear. I mean, that. you just stay inside. You know, I just become like a hobbit. I don't I don't go anywhere. <laughs> well, so I I went and uh, <laughs> I, the first time I met you in person was here Phoenix. not too not too long ago. A month was in ago, Phoenix, maybe? and that was. Crazy! You were burning right. up. I was dying. <laughs> yeah. We're in these rally fighter, uh, yeah. just armor vehicles and everything. They're awesome, so awesome cool. cars. Um, and well, I guess they weren't armor plated, but they're meant to look that yeah. way. They're rally rally cross um, cars and trucks or whatever the prototype yeah. was. But nonetheless, they have creature comforts to them: power steering and. AC, at least they say, but it is so hot in those things you would not know. And then we're in the Arizona heat. You're literally, then, though, in like the hottest area because there's nothing but desert where we were. Nothing. Nothing but desert. And then I've got like full full <laughs> kits on with like yeah. armor plates and like, it was just like, oh, I was like dying. And you, you talk about like where that point where it's like hot and cold and everything and your body like just switches. What I found was like, once I stop sweating, I know I'm in trouble. Yeah, that's yes. that's the point. Uh, that's like, the point. It, you know, I'm, what I, happens in that environment when if anything goes wrong with the grid? What do you mean? Well, if the air conditioning goes down on some freakishly hot day. Oh, you no, you have the consequences no, are intense. No, no, yeah. th there's there are people on demand like any time you need it to come fix your AC. Right. Like in Arizona. Like but let's say the whole... The infrastructure goes Yes. Because we had that huge blackout on the East Coast. Oh, yeah. Not too long. Well, I don't know. It seems like not too long ago because it's I have a vivid memory happen. of it. People were freaking out, you yeah. know? Like, uh, same thing. Gas stations. Yeah. Like, I think it was probably a week without power. Oh, for, was it that long? For a huge number of it places. Was a big, it was a big deal wow. here, too. Um, the rolling blackouts. Yeah. And mm -hmm. stuff like that when it gets hot because... Technically, we don't in like Southern California create a, a lot of our own resources right. from electricity to water. It's like piped yeah. in from out of state, and uh, I could yeah. I you think about it though. You live north somewhere, cold. Okay, cold sucks, but you can solve cold. Yeah, make a little fire. <laughs> yeah, you're all Burn good. Burn your neighbor's house down. <laughs> Whatever it takes. <laughs> Blow something up. But what? What's? But comparatively speaking, yeah. How do you make cold if you don't have? AC. I, dude, I don't cave? know. As long as I've cave. been there. Cave. Get out of here, cave. Yeah. Everyone's Come scrambling to look for caves in Phoenix <laughs> when shit hits the fan. I mean, what are we talking about here? Nothing's ever happened like that to to my memory, like, uh, since I've been there. Like, there's never been, like, a huge blackout or anything right. like Even, that. like, in the middle of summer where everyone's running AC 24-7. They must be set up for mm. it. Man. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I can never remember a moment where everything's just been blacked out aside from your normal storm yeah. or like somebody hits a telephone pole or something. Okay, is there anything actually wrong with Arizona weather besides the heat? Like, do you guys have like storms or like earthquakes? Oh, yeah, okay, flying yeah, into we, Phoenix no. is like, you, you, before you even fly in there, most people will tell you, it's like, hey man, you might not be able to get into Phoenix because of the winds and stuff like that. Well, there's winds and then we get like, like one month, it'll just like rain like, like, okay, just actually a few months ago in August, we got the most rain the city has ever seen in in one time. It was like really? like the freeways were flooded. Like okay, you know like the I ten or the or the one ten. Yeah. Like it was cars were floating on our freeways. <laughs> oh god. No, I swear, dude, it's the be the most rain we've ever had in in Phoenix ever, and it was crazy. And I would have never People known about it because out. Kim Kardashian broke the internet. I know. Oh wow. Sorry. That was Sad. that was quite the thing. That was a nice, <laughs> nice, nice it? transition, though. It was. Good, good, no, good Photoshop I, I, job. I didn't even want to go there. Actually, yeah. I was, everyone's probably listening right now, going, 
So um, I, I don't understand why why are they talking about the weather? So just to give you guys a little <laughs> idea what's going on. Um, so I've been wanting to do a podcast for a long time because there's a lot of things that I want to talk about, uh, be it politics, current events, and, and stuff like that, where I stand on certain things, talk about things from cameras to equipment and stuff like that. And not necessarily a big perfectionist, but I am to a certain extent. And I just wanted a, a cool podcast setup that would be mobile for me. Because if it wasn't easy, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. That's why I keep saying this over and over. But it's not that I'm lazy. It's just that I need something that like, just fits my technological needs. So today what we're podcasting on is the, uh, which one is this, Brandon? Switcher Pro. Switcher Pro. So feel free to, you know, give me a little bit of feedback on Twitter and comments if you're watching this on YouTube or something like that. Uh, we're going to do a podcast with Rico Live right now. This is a Switcher Pro. So this allows me to be able to record on my desktop along with I have two iPhone 6 Pluses and my iPhone 6 here that uh, has all of us going through one Wi-Fi signal and we're on a mixer here going on to a Zoom recorder. And so... I'm going to switch it up. I'll probably do the Rico Live podcast at one point, but I don't know how that's going to go down. Anyways, uh, if you have any better solutions or something like that, let me know. If you just hate the, the frame rate or refresh on this and everything, you know, it is what it is. We're experimenting right now. So uh, I wanted to take the opportunity to really like get to you guys to get to know everyone here and everything while they're here from, from out of town and uh, yeah, get a chance to talk about some things. One of them, the uh, elephant in the room, everyone's probably like, what, why is your channel name changed to Full Mag? So <laughs> yeah, I figured it'd be good for you guys to be here while I talk about this too, because you probably have like, I don't know, your, your own opinions. You might not be too familiar with all the stuff that I've done in the past where some of my viewers have like emotionally invested because they've mm. been yeah. along with it's me since 2006. It's hard when Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really difficult. But ultimately, what, what it came down to for me is I've had a lot of people over the, the last few years, they would say, hey, uh, or try to tell their parents, or try to tell their friends, are rated R, 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 and like, it's like <laughs> just how many R's are in that? And, you know, once people get to know me, they know it's because of my my name, my initials, Richard Ryan, and everything. But then there's always the people who are like, oh, is that are you is this, are you into porn? Or, <laughs> or what is it? Is this, is this okay yeah. for me to show my kids the adult and stuff film like industry? that? Yeah, and it's like, no, 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 no. Just check it out. It's me and guns and uh, you know, <laughs> so much better, porn. so much better, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I've toyed with it for a while, and a lot of you have, have probably noticed the, the transition has been a little bit slow. Uh, been working on some really cool stuff as far as a website and everything's concerned. The last couple years, I started off implementing the full mag uh, email list, and then some of you guys on the email list have, have uh, helped out along as far as logo design, some of the features and working on the website and everything. That's coming down the road, but nonetheless, Full Mag was something that I felt like represented me, uh, the brand. I hate saying that because it's so like corporate talk, but it's like it, it, it's not necessarily so egotistical as Rated R. Because like Rated R was me, and mm -hmm. like I like I, I I want people to be able to get behind something that is is bigger than me. Community. Yeah, exactly. And I hate like like I, I, I'm probably gonna like lose lose some friends on this, but um, I hate when people label their audience for marketing purposes. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. oh, rated R, R heads, what's going on? You know, it's yeah, like, no, yeah. no. And so like, for me, I just wanted the name to be like, no, this is, this is it. This is the community. This is like, you know, and yeah. like, and I, I didn't want to lose that whole rated R, R kind of, um, you know, me being behind it. So that's why people will probably notice the, the logo change. Um, Which, can I just add, is really awesome. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. A lot of work went into it um, because I wanted something that represented that community, right? And um, I, I, I'm going on a monologue here, so no. I'm sorry about no. that. But this, this, is uh, the, this is the hat right here. This, this, this is the new logo, this right? Is, yeah. This is the new logo. Um, and, and for me, like, uh, canines, dogs are right. like a big part of my life. I, I, that was pretty impressive what we saw your dog do earlier. Yeah, I, that was yeah. So, so, uh, so George, he's a, he's a stray. Um, we found him. He had, really? uh, yeah, he was like, uh, did, little dude was bleeding all over the place, like no. had parvo and stuff. And, oh, uh, wow. Yeah, and uh, 
my girlfriend went to take him to uh, a few shelters to see if they'd take him in, but because he had parvo, he's bleeding. Yeah, they would. He didn't have him. an Sorry, I don't know what parvo is. Just I, I, yeah. I, I, I it's probably a deadly, Google it. deadly disease for dogs. Yeah, I, I had a dog die from parvo. It, they, once they contract parvo, they could be dead in two to three weeks. Yeah, it's it's it, it, it used to be like more of a death sentence for puppies specifically, yeah. but now it's it, it's gotten better as far as mm -hmm. the treatments and stuff. But nonetheless, all the kennels or all the shelters wanted to euthanize him, and uh, even I think one of the vets didn't want to treat him. But we found one uh, that would would try to save him didn't have an ARFID chip in him or anything like that, so we couldn't find out whose dog, arguably somebody probably just dumped him in a litter of dogs out and everything, but, uh, so he said he'd, he'd try to save him, put him on IVs, he was on IVs for I think like a week. and wow, uh, give him mad yeah. fluids. Yeah, yeah. little yeah. dude pulled through, he wasn't, he wasn't neutered, so uh, we think he was probably like, maybe like three or four months old. Wow. Um, and uh, since then, like I've worked on different little uh, levels of challenging him and and working him. Uh, I feel like every dog, like they kind of have their own purpose. And, you know, some have had huskies and shepherds and stuff, and they love just like the the, the physical labor behind stuff. Yeah. He it, like surprisingly enough, he he likes to work with his nose. So I started off with different types of treats and stuff like that, and eventually worked up to explosives and everything <laughs> like that. My girlfriend hates it. She hates it. But you know, it is what it is. But it's awesome. Um, yeah, going back to uh, the whole uh, like the charity thing, I, like, I hate when people talk about like I, charity. For me, is is something that um, I feel like you should do and not necessarily tell people um, for the wrong reasons. Because yeah. if you do it to to say, "Hey, I do charity," it's like you're really <laughs> taking away from it. I mean, you roll like, up at an orphanage with a giant check and a bunch of photographers, like, "Sub, here's money for the orphans." Exactly, exactly. <laughs> my buddy Steve. Sounds like a bad cartoon. <laughs> yeah. My buddy Steve did a video, uh, you know, making fun of that and everything, like helping out a homeless man mm. and making sure, like, the homeless guy says thank you. And, like, Steve Green's oh, a great I guy. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah he, he got him new clothes and he, like, the hat said, like, Steve is great or something <laughs> on it. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, that's so, funny. So, like, I've never really talked in the past. One of the good things about the podcast is really being able to push things that I, um, I'm behind and stuff. Uh, a lot of you viewers who've been around for a while probably know that I was um, I was behind the Canine Members of the Armed Forces Act uh, with Senator Richard Blumenthal. Um, I had you know shirts and really trying to raise awareness for it. Um, we we ended up getting that passed the Senate, got gutted out by uh, Senator McCain. Took some of the the um, the key points out of it, like having um, military working dogs recognized as canine members of the armed forces instead of as equipment. Mm -hmm. um, but there, uh, that's uh, something else we can talk about later on down the road. But um, it, it was all, all of this stuff that I've done from like the uh, LA Valley shelters and stuff like that, uh, I, I never really talked about it before. Um, but it's been a really, really big part of my life. Um, I feel like the whole Twitter activism thing is, is one of, it's just too many people are willing to tweet stuff out and say, hey, we should do this or hey, we should do that. More people need to be willing to go out there and just volunteer and do stuff. So I did that for a while um, and I felt like the, the canine was like the one thing that really represented me really well. But also that pack mentality, that community, a group of people um, my viewers, who I don't have to label, it's just my logo helps represent that. It's weird. I feel like I'm almost getting emotional about this, but <laughs> it's, it's like it's, it's true because like it, like you know I I'm, dogs are like a really big part of my life, yeah. and like you know your, your viewers they have that intimate relationship with you, and uh, I really wanted something that would represent that without me going, hey, whatever you guys are, what's up, Wolf Pack? Right. You know <laughs> where are my dogs at? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude, we're gonna come up with so many. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, but yeah. So that's that's what I've been been working towards, and uh, you know, uh, for full mag, I wanted to be able to bring other people on, not just about Richard. You know, I wanted to bring other hosts on, and um, and the different things that I'm going to be doing between uh, firearms, explosives, and stuff like that. And the cool thing about it, the really exciting thing that I've been running with uh, for the last last year is all the different hosts and different groups of people all gonna have their own logos and stuff. So nice. we're gonna, like, have all these like cool logos for them and everything. So some exciting things down the road for you guys to check out and everything. But 
I am like straying because I was like I really wanted to get it out there that you know like this is this is one of the reasons why we're doing this. It's, it's like, a big change. It's yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. If you're gonna change, I mean, how long have you been working on rated RR for? Um, since 2007. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. 2007 was when I first started doing uploads and was working with Totally Sketch and um, a lot of the a lot of the guys over who uh, started Maker with uh, Shea Carl and. Um, a lot of those dudes, and then it wasn't until probably I don't even know. I don't even know now. I'm trying to think because I always say to myself, "It was two years ago." Oh, it was two years ago. It was, two, <laughs> but it's right. probably more like four to six years now. Mm. Uh, you know, I worked. I worked a bunch of jobs um, from construction, uh, app development, bartending, uh, landscaping, and demolition. Um, all at the same time while I was trying to save up money for my camera equipment and everything. And so even back then you knew where you wanted to take things? Yes, yes. And for me, for me it was, all right, here's what I want to do. I've worked with all these other people on YouTube, start their channels. How can I, in the beginning, set up a system of shows that I would wake up every single morning and not necessarily know what I'm going to be doing, but I, I would find a way for it to be exciting. Right. So, um, Tech Assassin is one of those things where you guys, uh, all of us are in the same boat, right? We, there's yeah. constantly new technology coming mm -hmm. out. We, we, we're we never not going to have something to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and then the breakdown is able to take elements of movies and video games, recreate them in real life. There's always new movies, always new video games coming out. Yeah. So. Um, that was, and, and for me, like the, just the different challenges associated with each of them, um, the, the different breakdown videos. I, like sometimes I like, you know, like the iPhone 6 Plus videos, like I, you know, cranking out six, seven videos in one week versus being able to do a breakdown video that takes me four months. And, yeah. and like just that, that yeah. balancing act between the two. So that's really. Yeah, when, that's the first thing that strikes me about your content is it's like. <sighs> crazy ambitious, especially yeah. in the scope Everything. of YouTube, right? Yeah. Where there's, I mean, yes, production value, if you want to use that term, which is, that's a very subjective term, but mm -hmm. the amount of time that goes into one, three to five minute video, there's this huge scope and this huge range. For one person, it's hitting the record button and riffing for that amount of time. For others, it's four months of activity. Yeah. You know, we were talking earlier about the uh, Ken Block video, his newest video. Yeah. You watch, you watch that, how much time am I looking at in terms of production, pre-production, et cetera? How many people am I looking at that made that thing possible? How much equipment? Yeah. The, the questions, when you start to look at it from a production standpoint, it just balloons. Into like yeah. eight minutes. It, into, yeah, eight minutes for your entertainment. Yeah. It's, it's really it. quite incredible. How many it, man hours took to make eight And minutes? sometimes I feel like, probably not in his case, but sometimes I feel like I bump into things on YouTube, on the web, where I feel like the ratio is not right. Like the amount of time How that so? went, well, the amount of time that somebody's put, maybe that's not fair to say. No. Because you, ultimately it's- You it's, talking about video games? No, 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 no. <laughs> because ultimately like that's the, that's the beautiful thing about the web and YouTube is that it's a free space for anybody to, to do whatever it is that they please. And if they can find an audience, more power to them. Absolutely. But there is a little bit of a feeling that Sometimes certain types of content, maybe, maybe they deserve a little bit more exposure and maybe they don't have the distribution baked into them that can help catapult them into that, into that realm. Uh, once you have a, a large subscriber base, for example, it's a lot easier to reach people immediately with something. Used to be. Well, used to be more so, more so than now. But there are smarter people than I that are working on figuring out how to improve retention and get more people to watch more stuff in general. Yeah. But uh, I think that the algorithm, I don't know this for, for certain, but I feel like it favors consistency, like lots of uploading of content. If you look at a lot of the big channels, there's an insane amount of content uploaded and you know to get those people sort of ingrained in those other individuals' lives. In your case, that's the difficult part is it's like if you're gonna put so much energy into the, into this content. How do you figure out how to make it all happen often enough that people don't forget who the hell you are? Yeah, I mean that really is the dilemma for me. Um, I uh, maybe for better or worse, I don't care about making money. Hmm. I mean, like that. That's the thing is, like a lot of people out there, they base their decisions off of um, business models that 
generate revenue <laughs> that covers oh the, those yeah. those revenue seekers yeah. well for me for me it's my sanity because yeah. um I, I mean i could i could do a a tech assassin two or three times a week mm. and maybe a breakdown once once a week it'd be kind of half-assed um it, i wouldn't be able to spend nearly as much time in thinking of creative ways to yeah. do things it would be very formulated and ultimately, it drive me insane because, like, I would like, I would be so stuck in this method of doing things where it'd just be like cookie cutter. And ultimately, I think my audience would probably like, would be like, all right, I'm good. I'm, you know, I've seen uh, we we've, we've seen you you beat the horse. It's yeah. it's, it's good. So can't stand me, the grind for too long. No, it'll, it'll it, get to you. Yeah, and so for me, this is a, this is a way where if I need to step back for a while, for better or worse, it like allows me to recharge creatively, and um, you know that's that's one reason why I want to bring other people in from time to time to you know kind of vent creatively. Right. You know, it's, it's, it, that's ultimately what it is for me as. Whatever it is I'm doing, you made the comment earlier about like it's so funny. You you can command F my comments and like a lot of my videos and stuff. If I if I take a picture or anything like that uh, of this this wall with the the paintings and stuff, mm -hmm. everyone's like, where do I buy those? Yeah, I made them. Yeah, and like I like <laughs> one I, of a kind. Right I, I, I I like to do creative things. Yeah, like, you know, like I like to paint. I like to I like I like to play video games. I like to drive cars. I like to yeah. shoot guns. I mean, it's just. It, what, whatever it is that, that gets me out uh, to go do what I do once I get off of work or, or whatever. Sometimes that's hard to get across too because you can, like in my case, I don't know, I've uploaded maybe 700 videos and each of those little packages, there's sort of a format. Uh, whether you like it or not, we, I don't know, it seems like we find a format. You uh, have to. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I try to mix it up. I try to evolve or at least keep it interesting for myself because it's just, you, you know, you, you want to explore, you want to experiment. That's how you f you find out what works or what's most rewarding for you or whatever that, yeah. whatever that might be. So um, I'm not sure where I was going with that. I completely forgot. No, or your formula, formula even format. though it's like a smaller, right. smaller format, not necessarily you, like the same thing, but you do need that structure. I totally get it because yeah. it, your audience needs to know kind of what, what to, to expect. expect. Yes, yeah. it's, it's weird because the web is becoming especially recently it seems a really clickbaity place like oh, my twitter absolutely. my twitter yeah, feed is full of promises that probably won't be kept it's frustrating and so yeah if you can if people can expect what to find at least within certain parameters before they click pre-click the pre-click that's a big deal yeah like the the psychology of that especially if i think everybody here would agree that the you know the amount of content that's out there to be consumed for free is just it's, it's enormous. It's, it's insane, right? Death to cable. <laughs> right. Well, I've said that before. Yeah. But I mean, it's just really, it's a really competitive place. You put all this time and energy into something and then you, you plaster it on a page where there's all these other suggestions along the, the sidebar that people could click on. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. even once you have them, you don't really have them. No. Any second. Yeah. Yeah. It, it it's kind of like the um, the thing that we have to deal with. It's funny you, you talk about the Kim Block video. I like it took me a second to really realize what was going on in that <laughs> shot. I mean, it's not one of those things just like clear. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because uh, a lot of times if somebody really doesn't like just drive that home to me, hey, you got to watch this, or I see a lot of people pushing it, I probably wouldn't even click on that mm -hmm. that thumbnail mm -hmm. because we're so saturated with so many things yeah. that are like, hey, click this or look at this. Yes. And, and honestly, like, m more times than not, I'm like, oh, really? That's why I'm a huge believer in, like, in, in building relationships, real, actual relationships with your audience. If, if, if you can occupy that space within their world of, like, a, a friend, a guy that they trust, you know, an authentic type of personality, then you can sometimes bypass that glossy, clickbaity thumbnail yeah, approach absolutely. where they're tuning in yes they want to tune in if it's regarding subject matter they're interested in but ultimately they're tuning in to see what you're up to and what you have to say if you can i mean it doesn't obviously doesn't work for every every single platform but we were speaking earlier about how important i think social is you know uh, not not just for like us and how we broadcast ourselves in multiple places twitter facebook etc but what social means for the other people like oftentimes we can sink into their feed along with people from their personal life oh yeah you know what i mean like we're we're occupying the same space as somebody that they interface with in real life in yeah. many cases like it all kind of melds together into yeah. that's what i mean and so that's a significant amount of trust they're giving you like we all get it all gets crazy because 
at some point you're like, follow me on Twitter or yeah. like my page on Facebook or whatever, and everyone's saying it and it just seems so normal. But that's a serious commitment when someone chooses yeah. to do it. And you're right above a post from their mom or something. That's it. You know well, I, mean? I don't know many moms that are on Twitter, but you know, no, you know what I mean. What, like, what up, Twitter moms? Fa- or, <laughs> or Facebook. I mean, if Facebook as well. It's not- yeah, moms prefer Facebook. We were looking at statistics yeah. the other day. In fact, myself oh, and I'd Austin. believe it. I mean, yeah, yeah, Facebook's for females. My mom's on Facebook. She's not on. Twitter. How about this? Pinterest doing more traffic than Twitter. That's Pinterest, really? Pinterest. Do I need to hit, hook up on Pinterest? I don't know, man. I I need to get my. Pinterest I don't think it's. Up. I don't think it's our core audience. <laughs> but Should I start pinning like videos? Nonetheless, I found it to be very surprising. Twenty-two percent of people in the web. Yeah, I think it's twenty-two percent Pinterest, Pinterest and like twenty. Seventeen. Oh, seventeen. Seventeen percent of internet users on Twitter. Wow. Facebook is astronomical. It was like seventy or something. Was like but I wonder the what the I wonder what the um, the actual engagement is for a lot of people on Facebook. There, yeah, there's a lot of people mm-hmm. on it, but your ah. feeds are so popular. I haven't looked at my feed in years. And it, it, honestly, like it, it's it's. I don't even have a feed anymore. You don't have a Facebook. I have a Facebook, but I don't have a personal feed. Like I converted my page a to while a fan page. to a fan oh, page, yeah. but I didn't keep a private profile. So if yeah. I don't, if my feed is dead. Is I don't. Exact same thing for yeah. me, and like that's what's what's kind of funny about it is like uh, I have friends and family who'll send me. Um, what are they? I, 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 this, a this is how bad I am with it. Um, what are they? The events? Oh yeah, and oh. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it will miss it messages yeah. all day long, but and I never get them because I'm always on the fan page. Yeah, mm. and it's like. At some point, it's like it's kind of ironic that somebody whose job it is to be in the social media world, how little of a footprint I have compared to, like my sister. Hmm. <laughs> you mean I, from a personal life perspective? From personal, yeah, yeah, or, or anything. They're yeah. posting way more yes. than me. I think it kind of comes down to we all broadcast ourselves in a very public way. So it's kind of weird to have that public and private persona and be able to put that energy into both. I mean, yeah. I feel like, I mean, I don't even use Facebook. I did for a while. I've completely abandoned it. Twitter is entirely where I put all my stuff, Twitter and Instagram. And there's no private and public Twitter for me. There's no private and public Instagram. It's all public for everyone. That's yeah. all I use social I bro- media. I yeah. broadcast things on there that you may deem private. You know, like certain, there are certain things that I think some people stay away from. Obviously, everybody has a different line to which that is. But if you follow down that path I was saying earlier about having real relationships with these people, then it's kind of, it's imperative that you're willing to share. It's it's such a fine line. And it's so, it's so weird. uh, My buddy, Sean, I was having a conversation with him the other day um, because he did this really amazing video um, where um, it, it, my girlfriend and I will like we'll, we'll spend together time and we'll like look together at, time like like that's very polite. And we'll talk about like just things going on nice. or whatever. We'll watch like certain videos and stuff like that. And um, one of them was was his video that he he posted with his wife. And it was, I think it's like, um, you know, his, his, the whole process of her getting pregnant and like, I, I how much of the process? Of it. Well, you're right. It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, well, straight. How, how deep are we going? I'm still, no, like, how does that even happen? So from the pregnancy Rated test, R? I think from the pregnancy test um, to gotcha. when they had the baby. And like for us watching it, Too I, much. Was, I was like, I was, I was borderline uncomfortable. Too much. And, and I was like, I was like, wow, man. And I, I told him, I was like, man, I, I, I don't think I could have, could have done it. And the more yeah. we talked about it, like, you know, I was, we, my girlfriend and I, we were getting emotional watching it and everything because it's such an intimate thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, like, the more I talked to him about it, it was like, I can see where they're coming from because it really is a special thing for the baby. Like. If you if you if you do it for the the child, yeah. I look back like I'm I'm you know a little bit older than probably. Well, I, my my audience is kind of split like 30s to 50s and like teens to mid 20s. Um, so I grew up in a time where DSLRs and stuff weren't readily accessible to yeah. us. I have probably a handful of pictures of me as a child and uh, specifically as a baby, maybe maybe a few um, and. I look back on that whole process, and if I, if I like sat down and I watched a video of my parents going through this whole process, 
I mean, I would like, I would probably like get like really, really like emotional. Yeah, like, I, but for, man, I don't know though. For me, that seems almost too intense. Yeah, but you know what? I, it's such, it's such a. I, I mean, like, I mean, I, you'd want to watch it if it were you, yourself. No. I don't know. I, I, I think I, I would. I don't know. Man. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. I, 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 I mean, all... it, 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 but who? Like, who are you? Like. Who am I to judge what my kids might potentially want? That's a yeah. great point. That's but you, point. I mean, you shoot it if if you if you use it, you, <laughs> cool. If you don't, you don't. Yeah, exactly. Just like shooting a video. Let's just just get the shot. You know, you might. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not the way it works, man. You're emotionally invested in this stuff. You might use it. You might not. No. You know? New kid coming up. Ah, just get no, the shot. Don't worry no, about no. it. Yeah. 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 Get the shot. Yeah, but I mean, at the end of the day, like I, I mean, the, I, I feel like they did it for the right reasons. It's a, it's a beautiful like. I, I, when we were talking about it, his his wife had an issue with it, and they they you know talked it out and everything. They they weren't gonna publish it, and uh, they were just gonna keep it for private. Uh, but then, you know, they were like, well, the more they they thought about it and everything, we're like, you know, we'll see like if people in our like close group of friends will. Uh, like it and everything, and it just kind of went viral. Oh, and, it did. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, he has a. That, I, I don't think that that channel that he has a fairly large subscriber base and it did like several hundred thousand views in like a uh, uh, short period of time. Yeah, that's I mean, a lot. Far, for far as far as sharing is like that. It's really high engagement. Right. Yeah. But so, did you make it like? How, how, what was your final judgment on it? Like you, you. I don't. I don't. I, I really don't. I don't have an opinion on. Oh, it. Oh, okay. No opinion. I don't. I mean, well, like, let's say it was you. If it was me, I like. As far as my parents are concerned, I would love it. I would love to be able, like, having so little. No, but let's say your kid. It's it's hard because I'm awkward in front of the camera. I mean, it's weird. It's weird, like saying yeah, that's that as weird. we're. He told me. He told me earlier that he was afraid of heights. I still yeah. don't buy it. <laughs> It's true though. And the thing is, is like when I'm in front of camera, a lot of times it's 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 a hyper version of me. Yeah, of course. And, and anytime I'm 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 really like getting into a meat and potatoes situation, far as like no, like this is like a, a conversation between me and you. Like we, it, be it with a significant other, be it with a friend, or yeah. me lecturing somebody, or like being angry about something. You know, I want I want the the moment to be. Between me and whoever, yeah. and not necessarily about camera the third change. Party. Camera changes. It really it changes the dynamic yep. of everything. Yep. And so I, I don't I don't ever really want to be outside of myself experiencing something. That's why uh, you talk about me and heights and wingsuiting and everything. Like uh, I feel weird saying this, but like the, the like wingsuiting, skydiving, everything was like really really spiritual for me. And like it like it like it's just it's one of those things that really like. It's like kind of watching like Cosmos or something like that. Mm. It's like it really makes you feel insignificant. Yes. And and part of something way bigger than you will ever be. And and so it, it, I don't even know where I was going with that. No, it sounded uh, fantastic the heights, though. I mean, yeah. the, the heights thing. The spiritual the thing. The heights yeah. thing. I'm down. Sorry. Um, the heights thing. Um, I I really enjoyed wingsuiting and skydiving so much that I didn't want to add the elements of cameras to it. Because I didn't want it to ever be me playing to camera. I wanted it me to be experiencing the yep. moment. Uh, and 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 I, I feel like to some extent, like I cringe when I see people like they experience their life through a vlog. Yes. Yeah. And, and I mean, some people they that's their job. They go out and they do that and everything. But like when it's like my my uh, my family member or somebody like that and they're just like you know like talking to the camera or something like this like no 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 be in the moment like right. experience it like, yeah and maybe I'm just the old fart saying that or whatever but there, I feel possibly like, no, yeah. no, okay here's a here's a good example surveillance cameraman has are you familiar with that no okay. I, t- I talked about this on the podcast Sur- surveillance recently. cameraman is a guy and this is why camera changes everything and this might be a far extreme but this dude he just takes either like an iPhone or something or a, or a little ha- handy camera or whatever and just walks up to people out in public and just holds the camera in front of them. It just doesn't, say, says as little as possible. Just I don't recording know, he, he never really says anything. No, he just, like, the just only time up. he ever says something is when they say, oh, what if are you he does doing? say he something, says, he's not editing it into yeah. the video. He may or may not. He's, he's like, he, he's I'm, like sure. I'm, I'm recording a video or whatever, but he, he'll, he'll just, 
record people. And There's no doubt that cameras make people feel yeah. awkward. Yeah, and it changes the dynamic of, of, of everything. Yeah. If you know that you're... But it's not just cameras either, though, when you're talking dynamics, because no. it's the same thing with a bunch of people sitting around a table at a restaurant on their phones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's you're totally not in the moment or yeah. maybe you maybe you're in the moment but you're in a different moment than the one that's right in front oh, of you oh like texting and whatever whatever yeah whatever it is that pe people do like it's we're in a very strange time where it, or I don't know if it's any stranger than it's ever been before but at least right now there's this feeling that something is going on outside the realm of the place you are and you need to be up to date on yeah, yeah that. definitely but the problem is that the more up to date you are on the, the general consciousness of your social media the less up to date you are on the relationships that are in front of you yeah theoretically i mean yeah. i don't know i don't know what your bandwidth is for controlling all of that and i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure everyone's different and they think that they can do both and then you get you know technology like google glass or smart watches or all these different ways of tweaking those interactions to try and try and be able to do both sure. without completely interfering i don't know if that's possible you know, for, for the first time ever, you have this passive kind of conversation that's going on about you, and you're not there. Yeah. It's a very bizarre, like right now, people are talking about you. And probably. Yeah. No, 100%. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, yeah, that, I saw how many iPhones he went there through. There you go. Damn no, him. Even there you in, go. Even in an um, even more basic form of that, there are people commenting on your videos right now yeah. about things that you did. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're talking You about are multiplied. You. You're everywhere. Yeah. People are engaging with you, your personality, your yeah. being. And, and you're, you're, not, you're not there to say anything about it. Well, know? he is in well, the video form. I know, but... And now there's a podcast, so you can really say something. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm watching you guys. I'm watching you. I'm, I've hacked your, your, your camera on your phone or on your desktop. So, <laughs> yeah. for now, behave. <laughs> but it, there's definitely something to be said for that. And, and you know, sometimes it gets played out too much, but... It, digital detox we were just like talking that. about yeah. that like i mean since we've been out here i think it's probably been a minimum that we've all been kind of very in, very little invested compared, into yeah. our into our work because essentially yeah. social is is our job you know what i mean like mm -hmm. that's our that's our line of work big and part of it. A, a big part of it yeah and so we've been out here and we're just like we're finding ourselves in these situations where we spent 30 40 minutes flying in a little rc helicopter in the apartment last night oh really just, just because like a it was tiny fun. One. Oh yeah? yeah. Just a little, you know, the little twenty dollar ones. Yeah. Just because I got a couple of micro drones here for the fun mm -hmm. of okay, it. Okay, that sounds like you're taking it up a notch. <laughs> you know we'll I mean? do like, that as well. We were experiencing life. There was no yeah. Twitter involved. There was no comments. No yeah. Facebook. We were just all laughing, having a blast, flying this stupid twenty dollar helicopter. That's great. And and that and you people miss out on that because of all this social stuff. Yeah. I, well, do they miss out? I mean, well, people are doing what they want to do. Well, for sure. Ultimately. Not miss out. I mean, I guess I guess there's just... You, you, they might have missed that it's hard special to say. tweet from that special person. It, yeah. Or better yet, a DM, Don. It's hard to say, yeah, like... Yeah, those push notifications. <laughs> it's hard to say that you're maybe missing, you know, What happened there? What are, you, what are you doing? I didn't oh, know. Did you turn on the telly light? It just went off. Oh, shut up. <laughs> no bullshit. It's just shut bad. up. We just sleep. I'm that's, just sitting there. That's fine. Like, that's fine. That's why we're doing this. No, it's okay. That was good though. That was good. It was flowing. Really no, no, we're we're not done. No, we get it going back up. We yeah. Back up, like use this camera. Use this yeah, switcher. Is it, is it in the roll? Uh. What is there somewhere? What's that? Twenty eight. Yeah. Yeah, it's there. All right. Cool. Use this camera or use this switcher? Uh, use this camera. Oh yeah! Wow. Say use this camera. That one. Use them on this camera. I'm gonna pop. So all you all line. you guys listening in on the podcast right now, we're still rolling. Oh, yeah. are we oh, rolling on audio right now? Right, we're yeah. still still going on audio. Oh, wow. So you guys are getting a little bit of the behind the scenes BS that's happening with this the Switcher <laughs> Studio Pro. <laughs> we're gonna have to tweet these guys, tell them what's up. Yeah. Well, I mean, sort it out. Uh, I, I forget. Okay, we were talking about yeah the social thing. I mean, you're really only on. I you can only be on one side of the what? fence at a time. Okay, but social incredibly prolific right now. What is the future, man? If we continue to move in that direction, then what do we become? Are we still these? Are we still the same thing? If, like, if imagine for a moment though that it's getting deep. Imagine for a moment though that the connection itself. And the digital experience and the digital relationships for most people become the norm, become 
more consistent than the real life ones. Right? Yeah. Imagine that more of your relationships that's, and, that's totally and more of your... Like right you know, now, it's funny. right now, if you were to do a per percentage-based thing, not including this trip, number of interactions, number of words shared, digital versus real. Oh, no, right. digital wins. For sure. Yeah. No, you know, let me Scary, just Scary, right? This. Well, not let for me, me because I, my family's maybe, right there. But, maybe yeah. this is weird, but some of my better friends are people that I've met digital, like through Absolutely. the digital But world. see, the meeting part is not what well, I'm no, talking about. Well, not meeting, but like, I mean, literally like spent significant amount of time with these people. Yes. Like Marco, yes. I hang out with him all the time. Right, but the... But the not the, just hang out, not Google Hangouts. But the important part of that is not the digital meetup. It's the real life interaction that oh, came because of it. For sure. It's because even with the proliferation of digital, right? Even with the increased usage, you still know there's some kind of intangible difference between the digital interaction and the personal one. Yeah. There's all these little nuances to communication that happen in real life that can't come through in, uh, you know, 100, in a, in 100 a tweet. How yeah. many characters is a tweet? 140. 140. 140. Yeah. 140 can't. characters. No, How many it, times are things misinterpreted? How many arguments wouldn't have had to happen I mean, on social think media? Think of it. Think of it like as like this is the one reason why I hate text messages is because context doesn't mean anything. And like, yes. there's no context in a text yes. message. A one word can mean one thing to me and two things. And so to you. they have to develop this janky workaround, which is emoticons, <laughs> emoji. Not, no. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, that's know, why I'm there. It's like, like, no, no. I'm really happy when I'm saying this. Yes. Right. Yeah. But you're not, you can't, it doesn't work. It doesn't, no. Too many options. Sometimes I just put a boat in there for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> just to mix it up. I'll just pick the wackiest looking ones. You guys know that. Yeah. I've done it before. Throw a little alligator in the mix. Or... That's right. <laughs> hey guys, what's going on today? Smiling pile boat. of poop. Boat. Boat, baby. <laughs> Smiling poop, that's another popular one for no apparent reason. I think it even has stink lines on it. Completely yeah. random, but yeah. we were at the auto show the other day and there was CarPlay and it was reading out like a text message. It's literally reading out like smiley face with, what, what was it? Oh, wow. It was like reading like no, the actual like it emojis. Was, uh, it was hilarious. Was it? it was Siri, yeah, it was uh, CarPlay, yeah, so, yeah. CarPlay was reading out the, the <laughs> Okay, for those of you so listening you can, you that do don't that. know what CarPlay is, it's uh, Apple's new in-car smart system. Essentially, you hook up your iPhone and yeah. what you would normally see on your phone, or at least a portion of it, is broadcast to where your nav screen exists. Yeah, so instead of dealing with the nav systems on cars, which exactly. is pretty bad, exactly. you actually can, you get into all the, the features of your phone. Exactly. So there's your CarPlay. They'll, it'll read text messages to you. That's what we're talking about right now. Yeah, so but you it'll don't, read. You don't have to read. take your eyes off the road to read the message, right? In right. a nutshell. Yeah, it'll yeah. read it up for you. Okay. Here, here we go. Here we go. I'll give you a perfect example of exactly what um, what I was taught or what what we were talking about about the uh, I just put like three uh, three emojis in a row and I can have it do this face with heart shaped eyes Happy wow face with normal eyes. so it describes face it just kiss. begins to describe the images yeah, it describes the images yeah which is kind of bizarre yeah but I guess I guess what what else would you do and then you have this right. one this one too right here Smiling pile of poo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm that, definitely that sending is, that to you as soon as you get car That play. is a great way to bring back all the guys who uh, are watching this on the video feed. Because, Hello, video uh, we, people. We, we, we're, we're back. Pile of we're, poo we're back on the. And video if you feed. want to get back that lost time, go to the audio version because some <laughs> some cool shit was said. Smiling pile of poo. Well, I, I think what we'll do is we'll probably just layer the audio in on this, so that we'll just have like a a blank screen oh, okay. or something to cool. freak people right. out or not. But this is all part of the learning process. This is one of the reasons why I resisted the podcast setup for so mm -hmm. long, but it's hard for me to get invested. We did like a bunch of tests for like five, ten minutes at a time. Yeah. We didn't have any crash issues, but right. it did just crash. So for those of you guys at home, uh, we're using the Switcher Studio Pro right now. On the next one, we might use Rico Live, but the way it syncs and everything is kind of difficult. But um, I figured who best? to start out with this stuff than a bunch of guys who are as enthusiastic yeah. about mm. technology. That's right. No, this is, I mean, like we Austin was saying, this is amazing what you're doing with three iPhones crazy. and an iPad. Completely yeah. crazy. Like this, I, I mean, just like two years ago, this this wasn't gonna happen, you know what I mean? Which one? Uh, it's, it's just crazy that, uh, I don't know, what the iPhones are capable of, even the iPads. Yeah. I mean, people literally, there are people, bands out there recording demos on iPads. Yeah, like, throwing garage bands. Like, that's really happening. 
and that is crazy, and it's... How about these things right here? Yeah. Oh, hyper yeah, the juice. hyper juice, baby. 18,000 milliamp This hours? is no joke. Right? This is the phone of the future right here. How about I hold it up to my head, you see? <laughs> Hello, ladies. 18,000 milliamp hours. So this is going to run an iPhone, uh, I don't know, until the zombie Two apocalypse. Two weeks, yeah. There you uh, go. Two weeks. Beautiful. Oh, this is another thing I like right here. Yeah, Bet you didn't know that existed. Okay, so th 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 this is like the reason, like, when I when I say if it's not easy, then I won't do it. I mean, I wanted this Can you get thing. that on a t-shirt, by the way? Yep, right? <laughs> I feel I feel bad because I keep I keep saying it and people are gonna think I'm just lazy. It's just like there's so much going on in the world for me. Like we were talking about earlier about how how much time I spend dealing with permits, yeah, licenses, yeah. and legalities. Like my my day is extremely budgeted for yeah. time and everything. And so like if I have something like this where I can plug it into the wall yeah. and it, it just it saves me from having to look for three separate chargers, three mm -hmm. separate cables. I'm with you, man. Organization's key. Like yeah. how many people like I guarantee you there's like 90% of the guys listening to this podcast right now, they have a toolkit somewhere and it drives them insane when one socket's missing somewhere or yes. a wrench and it's like I can't find that 10 millimeter. Where is it? Well, you use it all the time. And if somebody would put it back where it's supposed to go, <laughs> that no. <laughs> yeah. like, Who are I'm you yelling at right yeah. now? Me, <laughs> me and an actual name here. <laughs> Jeez, poor, Tim. poor guy. I no, but I mean, organization's key yes. for me, and I wanted I wanted something that would be good. Um, and I, I felt like this. It, you guys got to check out the the promo videos for this for the Rico Live, the Galileo motor or the motor Galileo, like the iPhone 5 and 5s. Uh, it's a, a servo motor that will spin and pan. So using this app, you can like Brandon on the on the iPad over there can can pan, tilt, rotate, right. zoom, focus, all this cool stuff. I mean, you have transitions, you have a full studio switcher suite in this wow. thing. The problem is like this one is running through the Wi-Fi right now, so the refresh rate and everything might be a little choppy, whereas the Rico Live app is recorded from the camera roll of each one of the devices. So once it's done uh, recording, it'll sync all of those devices with the iPad into one. So uh, hypothetically, I see, I yeah, it's, it's like, not relying on the network. It's no. saving to internal storage. Exactly. Yeah. So and just to give the audience an idea, what we're doing today with the Switcher Studio Pro is it's recording all three of the camera angles through the iPad. So for hypothetically speaking, one hour of footage would be like say three gigabytes on the iPad, but with Rico Live, we'd have full HD, but we wouldn't be able to use the desktop or something like that. And it's recording through the camera roll. So it'd be three gigabytes per camera. So that'd be a total of nine gigabytes on the three devices that would be synced with the iPad. So it's store nine yeah. on it. And um, that's that's the big difference between them. If any of you guys have any um, suggestions or you start geeking out on something or you know a better solution, please let me know. Yeah, it's I tough mean, the, though when you're talking portable. The, yeah, oh, and, yeah. And that, portable that and also it. the the round table format like this changes everything. Like like for um, for me, it, I've always ever used like Skype, and then there's like an app called Call Recorder. Yeah, that what you I'm sure you've yeah. heard of it then, and yeah. that's. Like the ultimate solution. I can't for, get with that though. I can't get with that. Why? It's different. It's, it's such like a, what, much like I was saying before about social media. No, yeah. the nuance in communication. You watch people on Skype. Say, huh, 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 right. It's, it's always like, that little. Especially pause. if you get three in, or four in people. In the video or the audio. Either. Both. Well, no, because oh, really? well, what it is is like. Uh, well, I mean, this is. It's kind when of to. The, it's when to jump in. Yes. You know what I mean. It's like it, it, it holds people back. They, you will oh. never see quite the same amount of energy yeah. in individuals because it's not that that You're sort of natural flow. Moment. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Exactly. Like we're sitting here. I can see you, and we're, there's no yes. uh, there's no latency. We can touch. Yeah. Look at that. Boom. Real life. <laughs> this we just connected. Real life for the world. win. What was it that in the Apple keynote? There it is. I, tw okay. I tweeted okay. that out and went viral. Oh, the finger bang. Yeah, yeah. I, I had the best tweet of that whole. No, it was like this. It was like this. What? Yeah, Tim like Cook that. and yeah. yeah, Tim Cook and I, Mono. Dude. I tweeted that, <laughs> dude. I tweeted that out. I said, uh, I believe the the actual tweet was Tim Cook and Bono just finger banged, and then an, and then the image, and that had a few thousand yeah. retweets. And that's what they did. Though. I mean, that is what they did. <laughs> they made they the, the U two album live just by. Like How that. about that? What about that move? Preloading. <laughs> Your oh. album, and then and they, not not just on new purchases, yeah. but everybody. And then they went ahead and, and said that look at how many 
how many copies of the U two U two album were were distributed were sold, yeah. or whatever. They, like, I don't know if they said sold. I don't know if they said sold either. But they said that look at look at how much many people got the U two album. Well, yeah, you pushed it to every, every Apple. Every single user. person I talked <laughs> to pushed it platinum. They pushed it to every <laughs> iTunes account. Was set was basically saying how do I get this off my yeah. phone? Which is crazy because it's like. I'm sure there are people out there who are you big, hide it, who are big YouTube no, you fans. You can hide it. I, I know you can hide yeah. it. But like, let's say, even if you're a big YouTube fan, you were going to buy it anyway, right? I, I just don't understand that model at all. No, well, there was some, I, I mean, there well, was, maybe there was money involved. Oh, there was 100% <laughs> money involved. I mean, from a user experience standpoint. Well, like, what, what, go ahead. You guys are pretty smart when it comes to Thank the, you. the phone stuff. Okay, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it out there. I, like, I'm... I'm I am fairly limited in a lot of the phone. Uh, you know how to blow them up. I, I know how to destroy <laughs> them. And like, it, here's the thing. It, take, it, like, it takes me a while to really dive into the user interface of a new yeah. OS, right? So um, going, from, going to iOS 8 and my playlists and stuff like that, I still haven't. I still haven't taken the time to sit down and sync it from my computer right. and get all of my playlists in there. And now I just have all these random songs playing, and I'm like, damn it! <laughs> when am I gonna like? When am I gonna like? So actually, you still have U2 on there? Uh, probably, yeah. yeah probably, <laughs> actually, 100. percent I just don't know where it's at. Yeah. See? <laughs> because I have about. like I have like a paid list and all this other stuff. So it's it just is because I listen to podcasts more than yeah, anything. Yeah. So, same. So it's uh, for me, it's not that big of a deal, but it is frustrating whenever like I I can't use it the way that I'm used to. Yeah. So I get it because I, I consider myself somewhat tech tech savvy. There's got to be people out there that are just like, oh my god, this U2 is on repeat. Yeah. What's yeah. up? Yeah. Where did it come from? Yeah. I mean, it's not like they got a press release. Yeah. They just turned on their phone one day, hit the usual random play, and had a bunch of music they didn't buy. Yeah, terrible so user experience. Why you you should make a video on how to remove it then? And then uh, a lot of people well, were freaking out that that they, they have they a tool. It. They, they have they a tool it. now, right, to remove it. Do they not? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You can remove it. You, you it can is. remove it now. But and I th- I believe Bono did sort of a yeah a bit of an apology. I don't know if it was a real apology or not about it. But that's got to be a weird spot to be in. To be him? Yeah, like yeah. everyone's complaining like. Something that you spend all this time on that people I know. Like, go to concerts for, people get it for free and but they're just, that, like, that losing just their minds. That you can't make Stick somebody it in like their face. you no matter what. You can't force yeah. things on people like that. It's a that. bad look, man. Yeah. It's a bad look anywhere to yeah. force feed people yeah. anything. Yeah. Well, had yeah. you given them a, a promo code or something like that, it probably exactly. would have been oh, just as, yes. fine. Just as But to well. automatically it's push Like, hey, you're going to get an email. Yeah. With the promo code, or just go to the iTunes store and it's free. Or right da- now, go yeah, or, it. or yeah. you can just yeah, you can click the get get it. You know that is curious. Yeah, right, right. I'm, I wonder how many people because you know I don't know if you know the Guardians of Galaxy. They did a free day. Really? To I just download. bought that movie. Like no, last not the night. movie. The, um, the <laughs> oh, the uh, mixtape. soundtrack. Mixtape. Yeah, right? mixtape oh, volume okay. one. Yeah, and, and the one that he's playing. In the game. I wonder how many people downloaded it for free. Yeah. Gotta, I, I don't know. That's that would be a cool analytic to uh, find out. I remember yeah. when Radiohead did their record "Pay What You Want." I believe it was in Rainbows, and they wanted to be you know super modern about it and and pay what you want. pay what you want. That was that the work good out, would that work out good for them. Well, it depends on who you talk to, <laughs> right? Because regular sort of run of the mill record executives couldn't have been happy about it. But at the time, they weren't on a major label and they were capable of doing what they wanted. Yeah. Uh, so they would probably t- tell you that uh, an executive would tell you he could have got more. But once again, moving back to the user experience point of view, it's like that's the ultimate, right? If I want to spend twenty and I have twenty to enjoy, I'll do it. Or if I don't have a bunch of cash, I'm a student, whatever, and I want to pay one dollar, I pay one dollar. So there but you are, had to pay something. No, correct? you could pay zero if you wanted. Oh, hmm. well, you could pay zero. Kind of like if you uh, the humble bundle. Same idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. There are innovative things happening in distribution, but the problem is that, especially in music, it only ever gets compared to the glory days of moving physical media. Right. It's never, it's never like, oh, this was so... We used to sell so many CDs. Exactly. <laughs> they're, they're looking at a history, a historical margins that will, it will never happen again. And that's why you get, you, this is probably why you get this wackiness with you too, is because they're searching for some number that used to exist. Mm. I believe this year is going to be the first year that no new release goes platinum or one or something like that, some crazy low, low number. Really? Yeah. Hmm. So ba- basically, record sales have fallen off a cliff 
and people are changing their consumption habits. Okay, you, so just sitting at this table, does anyone actually buy music? 100%. You so you buy yeah. music? Yeah. Oh yeah, I buy music. I Spotify absolutely everything. Yeah, I but that's the, music all the time. that's like leasing it. How would you describe that? Yeah, I, I, it's cause, cause, it. Because they are well, still getting, actually, they are getting, they are getting paid. You're leasing iTunes music too. You don't actually mm -hmm. own that music. Yeah. Look at the look at the end user license. Yeah, the DRM. You, yeah, you don't own that music at all. They could take it away tomorrow, and you can't do anything. You can't well, sue them. In fact, that did happen. There was a lawsuit. I think it was settled out of court. But yeah, but who, who was it? It was a celebrity who was trying to get access. No, it was a it was the daughter of a celebrity who had died, if I if I recall correctly, and wanted to he he wanted to give away his library to his kids oh, wow. in his will, his music library from iTunes. And he, the the Apple support wouldn't allow it to happen, hmm. and so he took them to court, and then eventually they realized it was a bad look. I may be screwing up some details there, but something along those lines. So it's a very interesting space. But like for me, I listen to a lot of independent stuff now, SoundCloud kind of stuff we were talking about before, mm -hmm. uh, because there's so many talented people that nobody knows about, you know. And, yeah. and and my feeling on that is. I can interface with those kinds of people. If I find stuff that I really like, I can put it in a video, get mm -hmm. them some publicity, help them do what they want to do. There's just such a huge amount of talent that's out there now, and it find that talent finally has a way to get to an audience without all of that, you know, bloat in the in the middle. Yeah. And so uh, I've been amazed at some of the some of the some of the stuff that I can find coming from people that have a few hundred a few hundred followers. Yeah. You know what's weird is I just I just realized something that um, I I really don't discover new music like uh, that that way. Yeah. Um, and I feel like we were talking we were talking earlier about this uh, and and how we wish YouTube would embrace this more, but actually this makes a lot more sense to me now because I don't discover new music through like the traditional ways of the radio and yep. stuff like what people used to do. I don't listen to Spotify. I don't listen to uh, Pandora or anything. I have my own playlist. My my extent of discovery is when I'm at the gym, and whatever's playing there or whatever, uh, because a lot of times I won't have earbuds or something like that. Um, right. And YouTube. YouTube. Mm. YouTube it, is the number one discovery service for ages what? Can't remember. 14 to 20 something yeah, young it. people. What's crazy about screen. that is we, we were talking about this earlier is like uh, What I, I tried to like push to the the music companies is like revenue share splits with creators right. on on creating content and uh, I give you guys who are listening in uh, the analogy where I was talking about earlier was was Jeb Corliss and grinding the crack uh, his wingsuit proximity video was sale and a wall nation and Without the combination of the two, I feel like like they there's a clear indication of how much their sales spiked when that video went viral. I saw that video, and and that music made his video so much better. And for me, I consume a lot of online content. And it's like, oh, if if record labels made it easier for creators to integrate, maybe do smaller revenue share splits with them on those yeah. videos. Man, that would make and discovery what, so much better. And what you're ma what you're saying makes a ton of sense because if you look at me as a music customer, I now go and seek out stuff outside the realm of where they have any grip at all. Yeah. Whereas if in the early stages, if I could find a way to integrate popular music that people knew, then all of a sudden I'd remain a customer longer. So would my audience. Instead, yeah. my audience is now getting introduced to stuff to stuff they have no grip over. Yeah. That's the alternative is for people to find a completely different uh, a different means, but. Uh, one of the things that I like about SoundCloud for Discovery as well is the fact that you have a feed, just like on YouTube with your subscription. So you follow yeah. somebody, mm -hmm. and every time that person puts out new music, you log on your homepage, it's always new. You yeah. never go back to listen to the old stuff. I mean, if you really <laughs> like something, you do. But the idea of music as a currency that you're constantly discovering, yeah. that it's not like it used to be where you put on your favorite record and play it over and over again, mm -hmm. uh, that it can become more like video. You know, on YouTube, on the subscription side, sure, we have old videos that get may get some views, but generally speaking, the audience is there for the new stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the old stuff is only found by you know the the search results or or, most view, of the time or view, viewers you don't have yeah. yet or whatever that might but yeah, be. Yeah, people, your subscription box is only for new stuff, and people aren't and, really going. And back. truthfully, musicians historically haven't been that prolific if you think about it. What do you mean? Well, they've been allowed to put out a record like every five years. 
ten, oh, right. ten tracks every five oh, years. Compared what? compared to some like some of these artists that I follow, for example, I mean they they, they pump out a couple new songs every other day. Whoa, um, you know. So uh, granted, granted, the scope of it is different because yeah. if somebody came along and said, "I'm going to give you." You know, hundred thousand dollars signing bonus or whatever. Now go spend a couple months making a record. Yeah, you're gonna spend a couple months making a record, and yeah. you're gonna go back and make sure everything is the way that you want. But the the more free flowing style of the web is like share more, share more, yeah. and use the process of sharing and distribution to figure out where and how you want to iterate. Well, and then you have these hybrid uh, hybrid artists now that are coming up by means of YouTube mm -hmm. to where. They will just spend, you know, their, their YouTube career is them playing their new songs on YouTube, right? Yeah. And then they'll put out an album, and then bet in between albums, they'll still continue that putting stuff there, putting music on YouTube. Yes. And they're like, it's like a hybrid, like a super artist. You know what I mean? Like a super uh, artist. I yeah. Like it. I like <laughs> well, it's it's like a mashup between the traditional, you know, every three fi to five years, and then yeah, the you can pick you can flow. pick and choose the stuff, but it's pretty hard to share publicly. At least from my experience, to share publicly that something that you hope to then eventually sell. Right. Yeah. See, right. There's, sure. so there's, there seems to be a divide there because there is no simple revenue structure that exists for your average artist in, in his bedroom making beats or, yeah. or writing acoustic songs or whatever. There's no easy way to monetize that. YouTube is not really the right place because video yeah. is only like one. Of course, the vast majority of people are discovering music there, but video doesn't always have to accompany music, especially when somebody's just starting out. You know, they right. don't have a huge budget for a music video, yeah. but they're doing fantastic things in audio. Maybe they don't want to get on camera. There are a lot of talented people out there that really don't want to make a video, but are making great music. Mm -hmm. So SoundCloud. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like I'm doing a commercial for them. But, <laughs> no, I mean, that's, but that's honestly, the... I just love spaces where anybody, everybody has equal access that's and, one of and the has only an opportunity to, like and has an opportunity to reach an audi audience. Well, there's like Reverb Nation. And oh, okay. There yeah. are a, a, well, a it lot. Well, because I think places I, competing in that space. I don't know. Maybe this is just my opinion personally, but I always felt like Reverb Nation was geared more towards um, traditional artists, whereas SoundCloud is more towards like just like beats yeah. and the the artistry of. Like, I don't know though. Like electronic. Because you'll get like, you'll get huge artists oh, that I release know. exclusives on SoundCloud. I just and I, give and could care browsing. less. Like outside the realm of their uh, record label and the agreements yeah. they have, they'll just go drop something like, brand new. I don't new hear there. a whole it's lot of point, a yeah. whole lot of like bands on SoundCloud, like full on bands. Mm. You know, I hear a lot more of those on Reverb Nation anyway. Right. That's what. But I don't know. I could be totally wrong, they, and I'm just theoretically, <laughs> you as an artist could upload on either. There's for no sure, restrictions. Yeah. It's just which is being used yeah. for which reason. Re Reverb Nation, you can sell T-shirts, and you know, there's lots of there's yeah. lots of stuff that you can do there. But uh, I found. Through SoundCloud, I found an enormous number of people that I can click through, and not yeah. only become fans of them, but become fans of the people they're fans of. Yeah, because with, oh, with, I love yeah. with music, this taste is such an important part of it. Audio is like that too. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know about Spotify. I never really use Spotify. I used to use Spotify all the time. Yeah. I just, I used to spend 40, 50 bucks a month on new music, but I got to the point where it's like, why am I doing this? Obviously. Spotify pays tiny, tiny amounts yes. every time I watch a song. I can attest. I have, I have music on <laughs> you all have the like services. You have like a quarter of a penny for <laughs> Spotify. Like compared to iTunes, is nothing. Yeah. It's right. I, if, comparatively speaking. Right, but at least from the consumer point of view, I have access to it on phone. Did, tablet, did you hear about computer. those guys that hacked Spotify? No. So what they did was it's like a, some German heavy metal band. What they did is they uploaded like 24 hours of silence. And what they did is they used it because they were kind of protesting the fact that Spotify wasn't paying artists enough. So they went to their social media and they said, listen, this is silence. Just put it on a player somewhere and let it run 24-7. And, and it's so, a bunch of different songs, right? So, yeah, yeah, so, exactly. So it's a playlist. Going so through. it's constant silence, but ultimately they're getting a play. They're getting like hundreds of plays. Oh, and wow. So this band said, listen, if we get enough money from this operation, we're gonna tour. Because they think they weren't big enough to tour. Yeah. They want, the super fans wanted them to, so they were racking up. They were like on the front page of Spotify. No way. <laughs> because people were just running silence. Like, well, they were sleeping in the house, at work, in the car. They had silence running. Uh, eventually, those guys got It's a shut weird down. business model. I mean, it, they got shut down. It doesn't really make sense if you think about it. I just, I just look at it from my point of view as someone who, instead of paying all this money for music, I have 
an enormous library of songs yeah. just right there. There's also a radio function, but I can just on load Spotify. all the songs yeah. you know, on computer, tablet, phone. It syncs so I can like control my my. Uh, one thing I will say. Phone. One thing I will say about music in general is that the one of the side effects of this kind of approach is that it becomes the, the commodification of it. Oh, absolutely. That's Wait, the biggest problem. You know, it. it's hard to really get into something. I, I can imagine once upon a time, like when somebody got their very first Beatles record and put it on <laughs> and listened to it. 3,000 times start to finish and started to hear shit in there that didn't even exist because they looked at it so damn yeah. hard. And you could go to your neighbor's house and they had that record because everybody had that record and everyone could sing along, everyone could relate. Now, you have a conversation with somebody about music and it's like, you, no, one, no one interfaces on that. No one even knows what you're talking about. Everybody's taste is so specific mm -hmm. because it can be because there's so much of it out there and so many ways to get it. Right. Okay, right. speaking of specific, this is going to be a wasted opportunity if I have you guys, like, on a podcast and we don't talk about it considering all your backgrounds and being tech enthusiasts. Being out here between the LA Auto Show, all the new phones out, you had the iPhone 6, 6 Plus, uh, Motorola, everything just coming out here. Yeah, fourth quarter, Nexus 6. Nexus what what are you guys geeking out on? Ooh, that's tough. It doesn't it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to be a phone. It doesn't have to be like specifically a car. It's just like what are you just like excited about? Putting right us now? on the spot. Yeah, yeah. hold why, why on. Not? The problem is that we get way too excited about stuff that doesn't even show up on the channel, like <laughs> yeah. camera no. equipment. And no, camera I was just yeah. I was just gonna say that stupid helicopter. Oh, that's that's <laughs> what's in your. That's what's that's in what my you're mind gonna right now. Recommend to these people. No, 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 get no. a little, get yourself a little RC helicopter. <laughs> Forget about the smartphone. That thing was we, we okay. We had this last last night. We had a challenge to try to land it on the arm of a couch. Oh yeah. So real, it's real extremely difficult. Games. By the way, I mean this guy's a, a champ right here. He's like he has ex he has background. I mean, I, 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 but but for one. for me and Lou, it's pretty hard to. Is it multi rotor or is it a helicopter? I don't know. He's yeah, it's it's helicopter. Got two, it's got two rotors and some kind of like Balance stabilizer. Yeah, stabilizer, yeah, stabilizer. On the top. And so it's it's about this big. You know, it's, mm -hmm. you can Super get it from tiny. Walmart for for twenty five bucks or mm -hmm. whatever. But flying one of those and then trying to land it like smoothly without any clip clipping anything on sure. the, on the arm of the couch he asks us a serious question <laughs> about the new hot phone no, and you're I telling him about a 20 dollar walmart no, no, helicopter saying, he asks he asks what we've been what we've I know. been no, geeking it's on it's true it's i'm true. telling you out of all the technology that we have with us and and around us i was geeking on that helicopter the you most were. last night you were I, it was fun i will not argue it was that. fun yeah actually speaking of that video the hp stream that's the hp stream 7 not bad Hundred dollar tablet, not it's bad for the nice. money, and full Windows, which full Windows, which for yeah. some people is imperative. A lot of people are still heavily invested in that ecosystem, you know. And and for them to, what do we have here? Oh, he's got a drone. Oh, <laughs> so, uh -oh. I have to show him up, man. He so just, wait, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to show anybody up. That's <laughs> that's. Let's get into into the real stuff, though. Yeah, I mean, wh what were you talking about the the HP well, tablet? Oh yeah, the HP tablet is one. I, it's hard to get really excited about something that slots in at the at a budget it's price just, point. You know, for me, it's yeah. wild that there's a hundred dollar tablet that is in better almost every single way than the laptop I started making YouTube videos on. Yeah, that's insane. That's wild. A hundred dollars. Windows wow. used to cost a hundred dollars on its own. Just yeah. on its own, you get a free tablet with it. Well, that's that's representative of how much things have changed. People are doing so much consumption on mobile, and Microsoft doesn't have a significant play there. Yeah, it's all Android, all iOS. How did Microsoft fuck it up? How? Sorry, can I swear on this? No, you just say oh, whatever okay. you want. I just realized you're, after you're, I, this guy looked at me like I like someone had died. No, 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 no. Say, say whatever you yeah. want. Like, you know, <laughs> another thing that I think is exciting, and this ties into the auto show, is our car is getting smarter because because car tech is weak sauce. Has been for a while. Yeah. And it's it's only gotten better. Well, it's starting to get better right now. Right now. And right, right now. now we're right at also because We've got CarPlay and we have Android Auto. And Dom just finished doing yeah. a video on it, if anyone wants yeah, to go a, check that hey, out. Hey, check it out. Look at me, I'm, I'm, not, I'm plugging someone else and not even myself. <laughs> you guys go check out uh, Mac Mixing. Yeah, you can but uh, this, is, this is finally a modular approach to dealing with dumb in-dash situations. And I've been told- and it's still very basic, too. Still I very mean, basic. But I've been told in the past that part of the reason that our touchscreens in our cars are so behind what we can do on our smartphones is because the amount of the, the time it takes for approval for them to get 
I don't even know which governing body I, the decides that. The I don't know who it is. The organization, the you know, some some N double N double whatever. Anyways, yeah. in, the insurance people. Yeah. For the longest time, they didn't want anything really cool to happen in your dash because mm -hmm. obviously the fear being liability. Like, you're not driving. Your yeah. eyes are not yeah. on the road. Absolutely. But that's really held things back a lot, and you got these stupid resist resistive touch screens and inputting addresses takes forever. <laughs> and for anybody who's ever used one, it's like Jesus. Why can't this just be my smartphone that I can just like clip in the front? Well, this is the closest we've ever had now. Yeah. Uh, he looked at the Sonata, I believe. Yeah, 2015 Sonata. Well, here's 20 the thing. 2015 Sonata does not come with that just this very moment. Okay. Um, CarPlay on the CarPlay is out. Actually, yeah. you can get like a Pioneer unit, which right, is actually course. a lot worse than the actual OEM versions, like in the Sonata. But CarPlay is out, um, but it's not shipping in the Sonata just yet. And Android Auto is still in beta. Right. So, but that's um, what you demoed. Yeah, I demoed the the beta ver beta versions. But if you I mean, I don't even know if the, is that car even out yet. Like, can you buy that car? 2015. 2015 would be yeah. out. I this yeah. is so, the model year. Well, yeah. you, if you buy that, you won't get those two yet. You'll get them at an, in an update when, right. when that comes out. Right. So. so basically, the way this breaks down, guys, is you take your phone into the vehicle, you connect it with a cable, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden, what you would normally see on your phone is broadcast on the well, screen. Well, no, 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 no. Partially, no. partially. I would say the stuff you should be doing in your car. I would say check it. Uh, the the best the example interface. that I can give yeah. to people. The best example I can give to people. Um, is to go watch the no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Google Now. If you ever use Google Now on on your Android. phone, is it on different Android. from like the Mirror Link? Yeah, no, it's totally different. Yeah, no. Um, What's have, Mirror Link? It's so uh, like Streamcast. Like, yeah. No, no, no. Oh, oh, oh. It's a complete. It's it's a it's a, its own interface. Like, okay. um, but Google Now is the closest thing to it, where you have like the cards. different cards. Yeah. Uh, and they'll show relevant information as to maybe you have a meeting later on or. You know, right now it says the weather it has some stuff. The key component with Google now, what makes it so good is it's preemptive, yeah. right? This is, this is, in my opinion, one of the most exciting things in technology right now is technology becoming preemptive. It knowing what you want to do it knows before you actually do it. And so Google <laughs> now, for example, if I touch down uh, you know, on my flight home, it's going to tell me immediately what the traffic is back to my house without me inputting any data, like yeah. how long that trip is yeah, going to take. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So, by in, for for that to interface with your car directly and for the device to be out of the way is not only uh, a lot more convenient but safer too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. Because having your full phone experience, because that's what every, everyone's doing. Because the TV or not the TV, the uh, well, TV experiences suck too. But anyways, yeah. The in dash experience is so bad that people are just saying, "Screw it, I'm, I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to do yeah. nav on my phone yeah. which is what instead, which is what we've all been doing since we got here." Right, and so that means you're like, you're, you know, one hand on the wheel, you got the nav yeah. screen over here, you try to rig it up in some bizarre way. And yeah, but I wanna watch DVDs while I'm driving. <laughs> okay, I don't know, that's, well, who was that organization with the insurance? I don't think they're gonna be a fan. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Your insurance rates just, just went Just went through the roof. Right. I mean, you know what, I don't, I don't care. I mean, like, I, you know, like, it's, it's one of those things where it's not gonna be the elephant in the room or anything like that, let's be real. I mean, they're like a lot of the people out there when it comes to like the Pioneer stereo systems and stuff like that with the in-dash DVD players, most of the people who buy those, they, they ground the, the parking brake switch out and stuff like that. I'm, I'm not telling you how to do it, I'm just saying that a lot of <laughs> it people- It has been done. Uh, yeah, it's been done in the yeah. past. And the thing is for me is like, I like listening to movies. Like I, I was tell, telling uh, you guys earlier, is like behind enemy lines, um, Step Brothers, Talladega Nights, yeah. uh, Tropic Thunder. I used oh, to yeah. listen to those all the time before I started getting into podcasts because it's just something funny, background music, and everything like that. And I've seen some of those, uh, the the in dash magnetic inlays or whatever for like trucks and FJ cruisers and stuff where you put the iPad mini. Yeah. Mm. And those are so sick. Yeah, that's another <laughs> so solution. So sick. Screw all this stuff and just mount a damn iPad. And, yeah, and I mean, just yeah. mount it. And then I know you, people that have went that yeah. route, you know? Yeah. And, and then you got, and then you've got it connected to your, your stereo system and stuff like that so you get that audio. Yeah, and yeah. If, you get the, if you get the LTE version No, I mean, I know people that have uh, yeah, custom apps developed to like control things. You know? Oh yeah. And, yeah, I mean, there are people that take that to the extreme. Wow. Right? Like, uh, and, and even in smart homes too, there are people that have, there's, there are companies that create smart home systems developed around uh, custom apps, you know, for controlling things. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't remember any of the company's names, but 
they, they have like systems they'll sell you to do basically everything in your house from an yeah, iPad. Yeah, AT uh, AT&T has it. Uh, I think Time Warner Cable is starting to offer it now. But the the funny thing with AT&T was they were they were talking about like you can shut off the water. I mean, there's oh. all kinds of stuff that, yeah, you can, you, yeah. I mean, obviously your home security when it comes to the doors and you can shut a garage door and, and all this other stuff. You can monitor yeah. to make sure that so-and-so did this or did that. The light's on. Okay. Okay. So if you had an automated home, what's the first thing you would actually want to automate? I like the number one thing. There's, I, I wouldn't because like I am. I yeah, guess it's kind of creepy, man. Because Washer, I mean, dryer. It's, I'm like, I mean, you watch the videos that I do, and you open be like, a garage if door. Be scared of automating geez. anything, it'd be me. I guess I see like, let's say you're like, I, we're not at home right now. You can go, oh, I didn't f- close the garage door. Boop, done. I can see that kind of stuff being nice. Um, like, avoid home alone altogether. <laughs> right. I, I feel like the the ability to. Um, Automate depending on how it's accessed, because mm. I don't want I don't want anything. Because we, we were talking about earlier is sacrificing privacy for convenience. Mm-hmm. And if somebody's able to you know, use a Wi-Fi pineapple or something like that, get your user login info yeah. and stuff like that, and effectively figure out your behavior or when you're home and stuff like that, that that it's starts scary. dipping into some weird territory, especially somebody like me. With guns and stuff like that, it's like no. I would I would much rather have my my house where it's not automated, but the ability to do certain things like okay, maybe so it's not Wi-Fi accessible, uh, but say there's a motion sensor on the bathroom, so whenever somebody's not in there, it automatically times out. Right. Yeah. So. Right. Uh, same thing with like different utilities and stuff like that, maybe throughout the house. Little things like that. And if it is through a central uh, system, be it like, you know, I have a Honeywell thermostat that I can, you know, yeah. adjust via app based, but not necessarily something that's connected to the internet. Mm-hmm. So. Man, it would be nice if internet security was an actual thing. <laughs> <laughs> if it was real. Like, internet security IRL. There's no legit security. There's no way to be completely. The rules were meant to be broken, Austin. Well. I like that's rules. how you that's how you invent that's why you invent something Austin. <laughs> I don't know. No, it won't happen. I mean, look at all this NSA bullshit. Someone always has access. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's some crazy shit though. I don't care. Let's be honest. Yeah. No, that's not a good. You can't have that excuse. No, I'm saying I just I don't put anything on on the internet. I wouldn't want, I I assume everything I put on the internet is public. What about what about the stuff you don't put on the internet? The communications that you think are private. I mean, I I just I assume everything that I do is public at this point. You know how many people gave me a hard time about taping up my eyesight cameras and stuff over the years? Everybody. Everybody. And like they they give me a hard time about it. And I was like, well, you know, I'm what would somewhat be considered a um, let's just say a high profile target. That like people like, you know, if they wanted to look into certain things, they might like, oh, you know, you have a lot of licenses and certifications to. I'm not talking about bad guys. I'm talking about good guys. Like I would be a high profile target for good guys to monitor. Oh, yeah. And and maybe they may or may not have warrants for it or something like. And honestly, I mean, like, great. I mean, like, I got licenses to do stuff that I probably like, you know, like a lot of people would be like, wow, you can do that in America. (laughs) <laughs> like, yes, yes. That's a conversation yes. I like to have. Uh, but, That's a different conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but, but like, I, I, I one up a lot of them. It's like, look, you, you're worried about like being able to access somebody's eyesight camera and then the green indicator light being on. But it, things that you don't think about, it's your cell phone. Yeah. How, Which many, has how many times people? Everywhere. How many? How many times do people sit on the toilet blasting a dookie and they got a uh, a camera facing them? Ninety five percent of the time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Actually, actual, exactly. Actually, actual statistic, by the way. <laughs> I was just pointing <laughs> at the camera. Close, close to I was Close pointing to at the people. I thought you were pointing at the wall. No, the wall's. I was, wall's like, I was like, like, that is not. Who is that? There? Is not a statistic. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is the declaration. I'm talking to you it. guys. I'm talking to the viewers, of course. Yeah. No, I can say that it's pretty much all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah, yeah. You're sitting there. Like this, you know. Between 95 and 98. Yeah. How many times is it on the bedside table when you're mm-hmm. getting intimate with the missus? It's always I, around, man. Yeah. It's yeah. always around. And it's not, a lot of people say, the, the immediate response is, listen, I don't do anything, so I don't care. Mm, that's a bad road but, to go down. Yeah, because the truth is, it's like, you don't, it's not so much that what you're doing is criminal. It's could anything you do change your behavior if it were brought up in front of the public like by by that i mean if you were tr- going to be blackmailed for example like 
yeah. do, do this because otherwise we're going to release this thing. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure a significant number of the uh, people wouldn't care. They'd say, okay, fine, release it. <laughs> but when there's other people around you that rely on you, if there's kids or if there's, there are consequences, right? And so it's not really your job as a citizen to worry about what's going to happen with the information that's out there about you, mm-hmm. es- especially the stuff that you didn't choose to broadcast. Right. Right. Only yeah. the stuff that you, if you chose to broadcast it, go then fuck whatever, yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you deserve it, all right? Are we gonna, as long as we don't see a sex tape from anyone at this table. Anymore. <laughs> Austin, no we're looking at you, Austin. Oh, Jesus. Is there a time on the Zoom over there since we had the uh, audio? Uh, uh, 125. Ooh. 125. Wow. So is that 125 or is that an hour and a half? It's got to be hour an hour and a half. half. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's... Uh, Wow, we've been going at it for like a while, just chat. That's well, cool. I guess so, yeah. That's the uh, nice thing about a podcast. It's just a bunch of guys yeah, just yeah, no, I, talking. I, I just didn't want it to be like four hours. Well, sometimes you get like, lost in the time. Like, I mean, you're you're well aware of that. Like you were saying you know, on you know, other say. podcasts that he's been in, he's you know you sit there for three hours and you're like, wow, three hours really just happened. It's even easier with more people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every yeah. time I've been on Rogan's podcast, it's just him and I, and, and so you you really have to carry it. It's kind of intense, but with a bu- with a group of people. This group actually meshed very well. Yeah. yeah. There wasn't a lot of talking over each other. Sometimes you put four guys down, it gets a <laughs> little intense. Yelling. Yeah, a lot of stepping out. I feel like they're like, it, it really is like hit or miss. And that's why I was like, when it, whenever I was talking to Dom, I was like, well, you know, hey, would you guys be cool with doing like a podcast? <laughs> we were trying <laughs> to like, figure out your angle and, here. And he was, he was like, he's like, well, I haven't seen like you. Like, Where I haven't is this seen, podcast? Well, it technically doesn't exist, yeah. but I promise you, it's not going to be one of those awkward things. We're just <laughs> sitting around, so. We're all crowd, crowded around a webcam doing like a hangout like, or something. You got a list of questions. So, uh, <laughs> let's see. Austin, what is your favorite color? <laughs> What's this whole YouTube deal? Yes. <laughs> When you were a child, um, <laughs> blue, yeah. blue is the answer. Oh, yeah. squirrel! <laughs> but no, it's great because we all like. I feel like, I mean, we can play devil's advocate and stuff like that. But we generally we come from like the same point of views on a lot of different things. But we have different life experiences and yeah. not necessarily sh- socially awkward. And Dom and I we met, and that was it's so funny. Like meeting people online it was like. I mean, we have respect for each it's, other, hopefully, like yeah. as, as as colleagues to an extent and everything. But you never know <laughs> what somebody's going to be like hopefully. in person. I mean, like, yeah. especially with, especially with this guy. I know <laughs> somebody right? could be really really cool on Twitter, and wow. then just yes. so awkward and on, so awkward. We know in we know a select one or two people. Like I that. will say though, if you're really good at reading signs, you yeah. can you can yeah. read it out before it ever becomes. So what Personal. are the signs for me? Let's hear some. Oh, oh, you? Oh, yeah. You were top notch day one. Really? It, top notch. Yeah. Hands down. It's kind of a shady. It's kind of. Oh, are you kidding me? This guy. Because we've been trying to set up for this show we're working on. You know, yeah. we got a lot of stuff to set up, and it's like a. W- and uh, and to be honest with you, it's it's all been my fault. Like all this shit coming up last well the first the first one obviously is like the most. Di- I, I've been waiting to do a podcast for like six months yes. now. Yes. And it's like, all right, I just have to do it. I want people to like, no, whenever I don't put up a video for three weeks, I want to do a podcast that week, just even if we're sitting around talking about why we're doing what yeah. we're doing, boom. Yes. So this was like my way of just forcing myself to do yeah. it. So, so we, what happened was I've been putting off con- uh, connecting with people and it was this kind of thing where it was like, I have an email list of people who might be interested in collaborating and let's do an electronic introduction through email and this yeah. and that. But with you, it's like, Dom's like, you know what? Maybe we should contact uh, Richard well, Wright. What it, no, what it was. Or, that was that what it was? I was already in conversation with right, him because right. I had hit you up about, you said, if okay. you're ever in LA, I'll take you yes. skydiving. And I was oh, like, yeah. all right. Well, I was like, I'm coming to LA this week. <laughs> yeah. Let's go skydiving. Plane yeah. ready. And that's so, a whole other thing. But the key, the key was your responses. That was the key. Yeah. Yeah. Because Dom was showing me. I'm like, I don't know if he's not really into it. You know, you could tell. Yeah. But he's so he's showing me your responses, and I'm like, oh yeah, this is this is the right this is the right kind of yeah. guy for this. Well, I, I appreciate it. Just a random side note: we didn't go skydiving. Uh, won't get too much into details, but I haven't been skydiving a lot lately because of some things that some wingsuiting videos mm-hmm. on the internet. So, <laughs> I'm still holding you to that. Yeah, to so that I, I'm going to try to get Dom in an airplane before too long. But yeah. uh, That's always my goal. Yeah. Get it, Dom in an airplane? And get him in the airplane <laughs> and then to get out. Just no, get I would, out. I, would, I, I mean, I would definitely, I, I 
I don't know what what it takes to do that. Like you said, like eight hour class and like not it's have fun. to go tandem or whatever. It's fun. I would rather do it solo than like you said. Like, how long are you guys here for? Another week. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm. Oh, dude, we could maybe totally set it up. Maybe totally. I like it. Do you? They, do you? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, it's I a mean, great combo. Maybe totally, bro. <laughs> right. That's real right. excitement. Uh, right there. Yeah, because there's so many drop zones around here. Drop uh, zones. The, uh, yeah. I love that. That's a, that is such like a reckless word. No, a drop it, zone. Like, <laughs> it just makes me think of like, just drop, you well, know? Good. I'm, glad, I'm glad I had that effect yeah. on you. Uh, no, it's... Uh, I, there, yeah. There's Oceanside. Um, I, I don't know if they do uh, uh, Accelerated Free Fall, the, the level ones or whatnot, but Skydive Elsinore definitely does. Um, so... If I uh, if I if I can't jump at Paris, then maybe uh, maybe we could go to Elsinore or something like that. Wow, well, we'll, yeah. we'll figure out something for yeah. sure. Because I, I like I've been I've been been wanting to go. It's just been crazy. I've never yeah. been. So Neither have I. I. I'm just like I, I'm at this point. Like that's definitely a bucket list thing. Like yes. I don't even care if it's the last item on my bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, what a weird thing to say. He's a, he's, a, he's got well, maybe the last he thing on my bucket. No, he's dedicated. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He had a weird look in his eye. <laughs> <laughs> Don has a strange way of expressing I've himself. I've never, I've never, I've never been, and it's always been something that that I wanted to do. Just, just yeah. because I, I, I totally get when you say that's such a spiritual thing, or it's, I just feel like it, it's the most liberating thing you can do, uh, it, because Crazy. there's yes. no, there's literally nothing holding you anywhere. There's no, no. boundaries. Like it's, it's great. I mean, it, it, like this time of year is usually fairly beautiful too, because like ballpark. For every thousand feet you go up, you're going to lose three degrees of surface temperature, and um, it being out here in the desert and stuff like that it can get significantly hot during the uh, summer and everything. But now it's like in the 80s and 70s, so when you get to altitude, you're in like the upper 50s. It's really nice and everything. Mm. So the weather's generally good here year-round. So it can, can be fun. Can be fun. It's the right place to jump out of an airplane. Yeah. Yes. It is. If there's any other, yeah, I mean, if there was a right place, this would definitely be one of them. For sure. Yeah. I just don't know if they, uh, the, uh, the, the guys at Elsinore would let me do a flyby. Whoa. Because, <laughs> like, um, it's certain drop zones, um, what they'll do is, like, if the tandem instructor has to be cool with it and everything. Uh, but what we'll do is, like, once you're under canopy and everything, then I can uh, fly by you in a uh, wingsuit. Whoa. It's, it's fun. Like, actually, that's like, crazy. my, uh, my... <laughs> that's, that's crazy. It's, it's Those awesome. wingsuits you were showing are not, you don't mess around with them. No, Those it's are... so cool. It's so cool because, like, people, they don't really know, like, like they don't have any prior experience with wingsuits or anything like that. But, like, they're, like, under, under the tandem uh, canopy and they're like, oh, wow, this is great, this is great. And then you hear... Like, it literally sounds like... A freaking Superman. like a, like mini, a jet. mini jet Superman. plane. But yeah, I have to show I have to show you some of the proximity flying stuff. We're, oh. we're like we're filming. We set up a, a, a slow mo or set up a um, kind of like a slalom uh, course for proximity mm -hmm. flying, and so they had to fly through like these so pylons. <laughs> so it's like uh, uh, Star Fox or whatever. You're yeah. going through the, <laughs> yeah. the you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's literally that, that's what it is in, school, in real man. life. Oh, <laughs> dude, that's, did, you go, did he just go back to N64? Dude, yeah, I just yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. I mean, that's that's Whoa. that's what I think of when I think of like that kind of course. You know, where you have to go through the things. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. it. It was so we're we're set up with like the slow mo cameras and obviously audio and stuff like that. And so um, you you'd see them coming, having smoke, you know, on their ankles and everything, and. They have smoke on their ankles, so it's a freaking jet, basically, like it a sound, human jet. It sounds just like a jet. It's and it has awesome. the smoke trails. Yeah, well, I mean, this, they do that we, for a fact. We put, we put of that course, on. Of course, I know that, yeah, but, but but it must look awesome. It's it's great. <laughs> it's 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 really really cool, and the sound just blows you away the first time. You're like, oh my god, this is so cool. <laughs> That's a human. Yeah, no, that, <laughs> it's yeah, a bird. It freaks it's you a, out. Freaks yeah. you out. It's 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 really surreal. Um, but, you were saying earlier that you're you're up there for two three minutes something like that yeah. right in the wings. So your your typical uh, your typical free fall skydive uh, when you're just like belly flying or whatever is are at twelve thousand five hundred feet probably going to be close to like fifty seconds. That seems as, like 
<laughs> nothing would it last forever probably, it, it right? It depends on who you are. Does it, it be, feel it like be, a long time? It could be a nightmare and last four years. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, it could be, it could be like, uh, I don't know what just I would. Well, see, I would like the, the nice, like, uh, just... Like it, like it felt like it long, was longer than it was, but not in the terrifying, like I think I'm gonna die kind of way. But in the fun, disturbing. in the fun, like enjoying the moment, like, dang, that, that like that was. Yeah. I don't want to just be like, you know. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> it, crazy. it is, it is. And then the good thing with those big tandem canopies and stuff, you're under canopy for a little bit longer than a lot of the the uh, experienced or. You know, what I, I don't I, what's it, the canopy thing? Your parachute. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. I'm and not used to all this technical terms, man. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you, Snapdragons, Qualcomm's, but canopies. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, it's it's a it's a it's like a, a Ram Air canopy, where it's like you know, like the old like round parachutes yeah, and okay. stuff like that. Um, but the wingsuits, you know, to, just to give you an idea, that what it's called is a glide ratio. Um, so your glide ratio, like a three to one glide ratio. For every uh, foot you're dropping, you're flying three feet forward. Yeah. So you, if you have a three to one glide ratio, you're essentially up there three times longer than you would be on a, uh, a standard free fall. So you can get like three three minute flight times and, and, and stuff like Crazy. that. Some of the bigger suits, it's just like you're up there forever. It's I mean, to think like, okay, one of our normal videos is probably three minutes. To think <laughs> I would be flying for that long That's a good way. That's blowing. a good way to... That's a long time. Like that feels like... To sit through a three-minute video can, you know, might be a little more exciting flying. than watching a three-minute. No, video. I'm saying the length of time. That it feels it depends like. what's going on up there. Like you can just be flying. You're by watching yourself enough like, Magnitsky videos. Right. Like the the length of time that it feels like while you're watching that video, especially like a, you know, like you're, it's a chunk of time. Yeah. Three <laughs> minutes to be flying. So what's the deal with the higher altitude stuff? So you said it was twelve thousand five hundred is the typical. Yeah. Did it crash crash on us? That's ridiculous. Well, I guess you, you know, it, which, which one not up? to use. It's still going over here. I but mean, yeah, it, this this one looks like it's still going. They still too. have video on yeah, them. Just just, so is it not going to sync up? No, because these are still thinking it's connected. To the All right, well, we we'll reset those really fast. But I'll um I'll but, go ahead and uh, answer your question. What, what this is it? this is my bathroom break now. Yeah, lose bathroom break. I think it's a good time for it. Yeah, yeah, do it to it. You didn't even have to put your thing in under your shirt. You oh, could have just, just disconnected. No, I'm saying you didn't have to put it oh, under right. there in the first place. I didn't know at just that time. Just put it on the top like this. I didn't know if at that time I was gonna. gonna I mean, I guess. The, yeah, don't take it in the bathroom because we're still recording. <laughs> yeah. No, he did that to me. He did that to me at at a, at a shoot the other day. He Kill was. Kill that one. He yeah. took his live. It was live, and I had headphones on, monitoring audio. All I heard was pissing. Oh God, that's great. <laughs> best part of the best part of that video. Yeah, I mean that's. I got a solid. That is stream, crazy, <laughs> crazy <laughs> stuff, <laughs> man. That's years of training. Sweet. So funny the uh, guys having to deal with these technical difficulties. It's your first yeah, podcast. Yeah, I mean, it's you know. okay. You just throw, all you gotta do is throw that badass logo over the top of it. <laughs> no, I'm serious, dude. Man, it's you're probably, good to go. it's you know what? I'm gonna do that. So now everyone <laughs> who made it this far will uh, see that, and we're, we're back live now, yeah. right? Or you could just throw Almost. like. Uh, oh. Ah, uh, allow. Yes. Always allow. Yeah, Boom. Man, we are. That's crazy. We're all set up again. Is that one going? That was going. Nice. We're all going. I like how before we started the podcast, I made sure to go to the bathroom twice. I was like, I am not getting out. How did out. you go to the bathroom twice in that short amount of period? Like, you were sitting here, for you went to the bathroom, then you came back, sat for five minutes, and then went to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mess around on podcasts. The, uh, you don't mess around on it's potty like, breaks either. It's like the, like the worst case scenario to have to get up in the middle of a podcast. <laughs> not naming any names here. So George, George is over here bullying me. Right now, he's like, hey, hey, can you pick me up? You're like a little baby or something, huh? <laughs> I don't thank you. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. You needed some attention. That's cool. It's cool, bro. Um, so what are you saying about the uh, the wingsuits now? As far as, like, the higher altitude stuff, I know, oh. is it Halo jumps? Yeah, Halo. Yeah, so what's the deal with that? Like, how much farther uh, higher up is that, so typically? So, different, different regulating organizations uh, have different, like... Like the FAA and the USPA are the two regulating bodies here in the United States. Mm -hmm. So um, now I'm going to probably get in trouble from all the skydivers for not knowing this 100% exactly in my head. But it's something like at above above 14,000 feet, 
you have to um, you have to have oxygen or something like that. Fourteen oh, really? or fifteen thousand feet. Technically, you don't need it until like twenty thousand or something like that. It's like if you're above it for a certain period of time. Right. Um, but a lot of the guys will do like hey ho high altitude high opening, mm -hmm. uh, where they they jump out of the the airplane at a higher altitude and pitch right away, and like so you'll see that with like special operations groups stuff like that. They'll they'll navigate under canopy for mm -hmm. uh, infiltration and stuff like that. Right. Um, but um, generally. Uh, halo jumps, which you'll hear people doing, are about uh, commercial airline heights, like thirty thousand oh, wow. feet. And, wow! Uh, and you, you would probably be up there for a while at that altitude, right? Yeah. So we did some halo wingsuit jumps. Um, it, it's surprisingly you're, the air is thinner. Um, yeah, obviously, the higher mm -hmm. altitude you go, the thinner the atmosphere, the worse your glide ratio is going to be. The more you're going to fall. So, like you take and you look at the um, uh, what's his name, Eustace. Um, uh, the Google exec that just oh right, right. Sergey Brin uh, oh Google exec oh no uh, Alan, not was it yeah. Alan Eustace was oh I don't know who it is oh man I'm I just he, I just remember when when Brin parachuted into that one event <laughs> oh that? the Google Glass deal the Google Glass yeah but I don't think he broke any records yeah I'm, some I'm, badass records it, it was no Red Bull jump <laughs> yes it was Alan Eustace well that was the great thing about um, uh, Alan's jump is he just crushed the records. And it was he. Did, he didn't want it to be a publicity stunt, which mm. was kind of like kind of a, a funny little jab towards the the last project and everything. But um, it, you notice that whenever he's he's falling from that that jump, he's not like flipping around or anything mm. because there's no real atmosphere to affect the way that his body's Whoa. moving. So uh, the the higher up you go, the thinner it is, the faster you fall. Uh, but because there is no atmosphere, you don't necessarily. Oh, we're talking feel about the space it. jump. Yeah. 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 In general, though, right. like when you jump from thirty thousand feet, you're going to get to the ground faster than you would if you jump from like fourteen thousand feet twice. No, I, I had to watch right, that video right. a few times, man. That yeah, space, it's that, it's crazy. It's the craziest thing I've ever it's seen. It's crazy. Um, it, but the the cool thing about it is that because there is no atmosphere, you're able to go supersonic. Mm. Uh, to break the sound barrier and everything. If you broke the sound barrier at like you know five thousand feet, be a completely <laughs> different story because there's there's atmosphere there that's causing this drag yeah. on you, your suit, and everything else. That's where aerodynamics will definitely play into more into that. And I am in no way, shape, or form a, uh, a physicist or aeronautical engineer <laughs> or anything like that. So. Um, take take what I say with a grain of salt. Well, still, uh, that's really cool but, stuff. Now. Yeah, but so like we, you know, our our flights at, from like thirty thousand feet are like around uh, five to six minutes, stuff like that. The uh, record right now stands with uh, Jonathan Flores. I believe he jumped from thirty seven and some change, and his flight was like nine minutes, something wow. like that. So he's flying a a, a big suit. Uh, and it, it, it takes such a toll on your body. You gotta mm. have like strong arms, shoulders. Cause you're gonna have to hold it out the whole time. For you sure. can't just like relax and chill. No, if you, you gotta... relax, you fly fast. Oh, because, really? Yeah, cause your your arms your arms come back, and that gives you more of a forward, uh, but descent mm. uh, on it and everything. So you're not as lofty. But um, it's it's great, man. It's it's honestly one of the coolest things I've ever done. So how long till we see you doing your very own space jump? <laughs> uh, you know, it's not really my cup of tea. <laughs> it's, not, it's not. It's not like because I, I, I'm not. I won't say never. Um, I mean, if if the Air Force, like the United States Air Force, came up to me and said, "Hey, look, we want to do something. You know, we want to bring more brand awareness towards uh, recruits. You know, oh. joining the." Is this the, the pitch right now? And maybe it is. Maybe it is. Um, or any branch of service really, and like, hey. We'll give you access to some of our military-grade uh, aircraft. We'll take you to certain altitudes, or we'll incorporate certain engineers. I just don't have the experience, or the budget, the money, uh, to be able to no Red Bull to, to <laughs> safely do that. Well, so this is a, this is another conversation. But um, I, I had like, you know, when it comes to like wingsuit pilots and stuff like that, I really like I have some close friends who do it. And I just love these dudes, man. They they do it because not people have a really preconceived notion that's completely inaccurate about a lot of base jumpers and wingsuit proximity flyers that they have a death wish. 
it's just not it's not the case uh, a lot of these guys love life for every ounce that they get out of it and none of them necessarily want to die it's just sh shitty things happen um, some people take risks that they probably shouldn't or you know just something happens um, but it, it, it kills me when these guys like I, I feel like I want everyone to have their own YouTube channel I want everyone to have their like talk about different things put their wingsuit videos up and stuff I have an issue when it comes to uh, people doing things and not getting paid for it these big aggregating channels of like extreme sports oh, and stuff like that and they yeah, don't necessarily yeah. pay the athletes what they should pay them for that type of content because at the end of the day proximity flying stuff like that even if you're creating firearms videos and stuff like that if you're you're creating them for a little bit of money yeah the short-term game might be good but you're building somebody else's brand yeah and yeah. I, I have a problem with that if you don't have stock in their company or they're not compensating you for it like especially when it comes to st extreme sports like wingsuit flying it's like you are risking your life if you don't think that's worth tens of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. then you step aside and if everyone quit doing it see how many of those executives from those channels and <laughs> stuff like that would go out there and do it because they could mm -hmm. and we have like a really we are like and I might be speaking out of turn here, and I apologize if I am. Like uh, for any of you, like guys who are like professional wingsuit pilots and stuff uh, out there. But um, you know, we had a really hard year uh, losing you know, two of our arguably like really really phenomenal wingsuit uh, cameramen, Jeff Nebelkoff and um, um, uh, 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 Ludo. Sorry, I was drawing a blank here, but these these two guys are arguably responsible for some of the biggest wingsuit videos. You, you, if you saw a badass wingsuit video, they were probably flying camera on it. You'll see lot, there's plenty of badass wingsuit pilots out there who who have GoPros on themselves and they do crazy lines and stuff like that. But the ones where you see um, the wide of the guy flying, that guy who was flying the slot above him and everything, that's a different skill set. And they're flying big DSLR cameras, oh, and it's 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 it's, it's it, it adds way more elements of danger to it and everything. And uh, we lost two of those guys this year, um, so that it, it really resonates within the community. It's like it's like look, you mean your lives are worth, you know, a lot, and you should be compensated for it, even if you are having a good time. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you're suggesting that they're not getting much out of it. No. I, I don't think so. I mean, it, like, and it's not, and don't get me wrong, it's not just the wingsuiting community. I mean, like, it's everything. It's everything on YouTube. There's a lot of people taken and being taken advantage of in the firearms community, in the vlogging community, and stuff like that. Oh, we have a big audience. Just give us, like, I'll, I will throw it out there right now. If you make good firearms videos, you want to upload them on Rated RR or Full Mag, send it to me. If you make good wingsuit videos or something like that, send it to me. You're just building equity in my brand, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, you're, if you're a proximity flyer, your life is on the line. Every single time you make one of these videos, you should be compensated for it. I so I, I haven't ever really, you know, like some of my friends will, will be in some of my videos. We did a thing uh, with GoPro uh, where it was supposed to be a big uh, PR event um, with the Everest Live um, jump that Joby was going to do where he's going to oh, okay. base jump off of uh, Mount Everest and there was an avalanche really tragic event um, and it ended up not happening but I had already like uh, got some of my buddies involved on a wingsuit video that we did where we did some flybys of uh, proximity flying like a balloon and doing some balloon jump just having a good time and uh, you know I made sure that they all you know like got hooked up you know nobody had to pay for anything and, and all that other stuff but there's a big difference between that and proximity flying and like not even getting a credit mm -hmm. you know it's like oh well we'll give you a few hundred dollars for this and like, yeah. no 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 it, and again it's different whenever you're just skydiving but uh, proximity flying that's a I think thing. anywhere where you've got people who are working from a position of passion or love something that they're really into it you'll find people that are getting taken advantage of yeah Absolutely. because they want to do it so badly that they're willing to accept the parameters of that you know that scenario yeah and that's the unfortunate part because generally the, the people that are the best at what they do have that passion yeah but uh, you don't necessarily always have the business side to match up to the level of passion the person's bringing to that particular project yeah so i mean that's that's one reason why i think a lot of people were like 
really stoked about the uh, Alan Eustace uh, jump because it really I mean he I think I think there was an article about it where they they mentioned that Google had said hey you know you would help out with this and he's like well no I don't want it to become a big PR event thing I want it to be more about the science and what mm -hmm. we learn about it and everything you know I want it to be about you know the jump and what we we learn for it I don't necessarily want it to be like hey I got this record though records are nice <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but I've like I I I have a bunch of buddies who, um, you know, we talked about doing some record jumps and stuff like that when it comes to wingsuit and everything. And you know, like by all means, if anybody's listening out there has the capacity to sponsor a uh, a big video, I, let me know. Let me know. Um, but I really don't necessarily want to go after records, but I want to involve my friends who I feel like have paid their dues. They've been wingsuit pilots for many years. They've been around. I almost feel like I, I'm not necessarily a tourist, but I'm new to the community, and I don't want to be the guy who comes out there just because I have access to stuff and just starts breaking records. Because I mean, it's like, <laughs> is it like, that easy to do? Um, the thing is, it's it, it's it's not that easy to do. It's just if you have the capacity to throw money at certain things to give you the opportunity, like, like don't get me wrong, a lot went into the, the, the high altitude, the space jumps and stuff like that. You can't just, as a consumer, do that. There's gotta be somebody behind yeah, that to yeah. finance that, make sure that once you, you get past certain layers of the atmosphere, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure they ran probably, they prepared for years, I'm sure, yeah. doing this thing. Well, I, when we did... Um, like testing and dropping dummies probably or something. <laughs> I, 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 honestly, I have no idea. I don't either, but I'm assuming that they did a lot of testing. Yeah, we'll see. Do so. jump from space. <laughs> a lot of people see that stuff, and they're so desensitized because they're used to specific results. They're, like, yeah. they, they're used to, oh, they're going to break this record, great, and we're going to go see this. Yeah. All right. Great. They don't see the consequences for a lot of stuff. So that's, that's one reason why I like trying to be as real as possible with my audience is like, um, or my viewers is a, I did this thing where Red Dawn was like, hey, would you be interested in doing a Halo wingsuit jump? It's like, well, um, I haven't even started wingsuiting yet. <laughs> it was the same thing with skydiving. Yeah. And, and, and so like I, I was able to learn because I didn't necessarily have the money to do it on my own, but because a company was willing to help me out uh, financially to make it happen, all for it. And and so we did that for Red Dawn, and it, it really, really rings home because like I I went hypoxic. That's George going crazy. He's like he's like, hey, I'm just showing you guys that I got a baby <laughs> over here, and I'm, I'm should cool. we mic him up? Or yeah, what? yeah, might as well. Um, it, but it it really like resonated with me because um, I expected to achieve a certain result. I was like, all right, so we're gonna we're gonna pay for this. We're gonna pay for the flight up, and we're gonna have oxygen and all this other stuff. I'm gonna go out here and we're gonna make the video, and it didn't happen. I mean, we started going up in the plane, and I I wake up with the plane coming down and watching the footage like my camera guys kept uh they kept rolling the cameras and everything and i went hypoxic i was completely out twitching on the floor of the aircraft Crazy. and everything it's uh hypoxia is a lot, uh, oxygen deprivation and i was at a, a degree at which um it wasn't going to kill me because i still had oxygen going to my mask and everything but um but not enough to really consciously do certain motor skills and so, uh, depending on the degree that you go, you continue doing the last thing. You can get that brain you, damage. The last yeah. thing you gave your brain um, a, a command to do, let's say, for the lack of a better phrase. Uh, and mine was put my glove on. So for like a minute and a half, I'm out twitching on the ground doing this, trying to put a glove on. And that that yeah. was it and then it was like a skipping cd you, gl at that you point. glitched out like a video game. yeah exactly yeah. and <laughs> and so it wasn't until we got to uh like around twelve thousand feet that it's like boom the light switch came back on i was like whoa and they're like holding me down so i don't jump out of the airplane That's crazy. and everything and and you realize the gravity of of the situation where it's like 
yes, it's fun. Yes, we're going out here. We're making a video, but I've always been like this when it comes to firearms. I take it like, because I'm a range safety officer, instructor, I like take it extremely seriously, especially when there's new shooters at the range and everything. You understand that there is a potential life-threatening situation here if people don't follow certain safety protocols. And when it came this way with the, the wingsuit, I wasn't necessarily aware, aside from the, the medics and everybody, they knew the signs to look for with me going hypoxic and stuff like that, so I was in good hands. But um, you, you look at it, it's like, oh, this is a YouTube video. But <laughs> yeah. and, and it's like, you don't really understand that, the, the, like, a lot of times, like, my life is technically on the line yeah. for it. And well, pretty much almost every video you put yeah, up. Yeah, I mean, to an extent, it's well, a very calculated risk. Yeah, for the sure. The stuff that I do because like, I, way way more calculated than this video, right? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. What are you trying to say, Dom? What? Huh? You trying to Actually, say this is not what? calculated? No, no. I mean, I mean the the risk, the life risk factor. Oh, for sure. Like like you said earlier, I don't know. every time you're making a video like podcasts. that, you're actively trying to save your own life. This is That's true. Fair point, and yeah. and as far as the risk is is concerned, the risk ver uh, on this versus that. Believe it or not, um, I actually argue to put way more thought into work and on on the podcast than actually <laughs> the wings thing because you, you the, at a certain degree you, you it's funny because the first seven or eight jumps you're you're not really confident in your gear's ability to save your life. The way I try to equate skydiving and becoming comfortable with it is uh, because I used to race motorcycles is is the same way for a new person riding a motorcycle is it's not necessarily intuitive to lean into a corner whenever you're on a street bike or you're on a track or something yeah. like that. Uh, you want to steer it like you do like cars and stuff like that. And after a while you build up trust in your your, your equipment, your, your ability for your tires to grip in mm -hmm. a corner and how far you can lean them over and everything. Yeah. Same thing with skydiving equipment. You don't trust it right out of the gate. You'd be if you did, that'd be the stupidest thing you could ever do. Yeah, I and mean, it's like, why would you? You ever... let your guards down, and you yeah. start. You start. Uh, you don't think the in the same kind of emergency matter when you start trusting things. That's you know? exactly it. That's like exactly you, it. You 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 your reaction time lessens, I guess. Exactly. Because you know that you're. Oh, I'm good with this. And and so for as far as the uh, skydiving equipment and everything like that, I I just had to trust the people who have done it before me, that okay they're alive. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously they figured a few things out along the way. This whole jumping out of a plane deal. It works worked out. out. It worked out for them, you know. Yeah. So it was the same way with me and the the oxygen equipment. Obviously, the guys have done it before. They're medics. They're trained. To, they know what to look for. For me, I didn't have a whole lot to to deal with going yeah. into it, except for trying to figure out ways to route the oxygen system. And ultimately, that's one of the things where we found out that maybe it was bad. Did it crash? Oh. I was like, no, it crashed again. It's like, uh, because most people who do the, the halo jumps and stuff like that, they're standard belly free fall, they're not wingsuiters. Mm -hmm. And so rigging up the oxygen system so it didn't create drag mm -hmm. whenever I was trying to fly and everything, uh, we put it at the base of the rig and maybe the draw for the oxygen because it's not compressed. So you like, weren't getting enough air, you're saying. Exactly. You're wearing a mask, I'm, I'm assuming. So yeah. here's a question. Sure. What happens? What do you mean? Well, you were supposed you're supposed to make this video. Yeah, did you ever make oh, it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we I mean like the, they were kind enough to pay for another flight up and everything oh, and we cool. were able to get the the footage oh, okay. and everything and cool, You just cool, went cool. the same day. You're just like no. Yes. What? You the, can't go the same day, man. Yes. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess sit on the couch. Once you're good, good, right? good, right? So that's that's where YouTube kind of like screws me sometimes. It's like I understand the uh, the urgency of certain situations. I'm like, I gotta do it. Yeah. I gotta do it. And I don't take unnecessary risks, but this is one of the things where uh, the, the classic signs of the types of uh, degrees that you go through with hypoxia, uh, I, I wasn't nauseous. I wasn't lightheaded. I felt fine. Um, and we waited uh, several hours and we tried again at the end of the day and yeah. everything was good. Well, so. here's, here's a question though, and th this isn't meant to like. Maybe get, that's what's wrong with this me isn't now. No, this isn't meant to get dark or anything, but like. How dare you die? No, I know if, exactly what you're going to say no, 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 right no. now. What if I died? Well, no, what if, what if that happens when you're like mid flight? Is there like a fail safe? Like, is there like. Um, no, so I think, I think that. Like, you know what I mean? Like. 
So, because stuff does have people pass have passed out before, right? Uh, there, I talked to the guys and they said some people have passed out in in uh, like going out the door, mm -hmm. but they w wake up in free fall. Oh, oh, that's gotta be because fucking scary, man! I saw a guy. Holy I saw a video crap. guy gets knocked out. He like collided with another skydiver. That video is so epic. That like you're yeah. talking about the guys that say they say they him? save him. Yeah, so cool. Yeah, that is so that that is like I love seeing stuff like that because that is like that just shows like the because again people think everyone who skydives are just like reckless daredevils that don't care about living and everything. <laughs> and no. man, the amount of precision and like just a situational awareness from those guys to say, hey, something isn't right here, and then coming in there and like checking in with them, are you good, are you good? Mm. And like, and then like when they realize there wasn't a problem, they, kept, yeah. they get alongside him and they yeah. pull his mane, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, that is that. They were like lifting so his arm I mean, that's, to that's see. That's what would have to happen in that situation, That embodies right? like, 99% of the skydivers out there. They're, most people are really well educated when it comes to like situational awareness, wanting to, I mean, well, maybe not 99%. There are reckless people out there. I mean, there are some people who aren't current, but the, I, I want to think that, you know, out of the people that I know, they're extremely like careful about that stuff. They go to have a good time, um, but at the end of the day, they're they're paying attention to stuff like that. that is a phenomenal video. I don't have to put a link to that yeah, if you guys are you guys are watching at home or whatnot. Yeah, it's wild. Um, I, and the, the thing about it, well, we've already told you the outcome, but yeah. when you're watching it the first time, you're kind of sketchy on the outcome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you you obviously don't. So watch how's it filmed? Is it filmed from the guy's GoPro? Point GoPro. Of view? GoPro. Yeah. No, they're like the guy who passed. Yeah, out. his point of view. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and the weird thing is. I don't remember who I was watching with, but they're like, no, he's not out. Because, you know, the way the body was mm, sort of yeah. reacting to the free fall. But then you see his kind of like, the, his arms look all dead. It's flailing. Yeah, like, and not, you're like, oh, yeah. that guy's out. But then you see people reacting very quickly. And and so you have you have a reserve um, canopy and um, an AAD, which is measuring the, the fall rate. So if at a certain altitude you haven't deployed your main canopy, it, does it? it will cut your reserve pin and wow, deploy okay. your reserve. That's, um, that's, that sounds pretty high tech. It's super high tech. Like it's new, new stuff, right? And a like lot of people new. feel a lot no, better about skydiving now, don't you? I'd say, I'd say the yeah, 90s, maybe the 90s, maybe that's, 80s. That's yeah. pretty awesome though, but yeah. See, there, there's a lot of like misconceptions, like preconceived notions when it mm -hmm. comes to skydiving. It's uh, fairly safe you for ever students. That? No, but there are plenty of YouTube videos of people who aren't necessarily the safest ones out there. And I the, would not want the, to test that. The problem is like <laughs> I wouldn't either. I'm I, just testing asking. the airbags I, in your car. What I'll do is I, uh, underneath the one where the guy gets knocked out, I'll put another one of my uh, my favorites where it, these two guys that are like, "Hey, we're gonna go get that one point. We're gonna make our dock, our grip." And then they forget their situational awareness, and then all of a sudden, one of the guys disappears because he gets a uh, an AAD fire, wow. and it's deploying his reserve. And then they land in a cornfield, and huh. it's like, dude, you got you got to you got to remember to save your life. Yeah, you know that's yeah. the thing I worry about. The guy like yourself is 600 jumps deep at this point. It's like at some point, does it become so commonplace that that you know your situational awareness? You know, like you know, like I get it. you know when you're sitting in gridlock on the highway, and eventually yeah. it's like you're, just, you're zoning. Yeah. I wonder if you could spend so much time in the sky that you. Well, the adrenaline rush. I don't think. I mean, maybe it's different for other people. The adrenaline okay, rush let's hasn't take, really gone away. Okay, from me, let, but okay, let's take the adrenaline rush though. For example, it'll never be what it was the first time. Uh, well, I don't know about that. Because really? Every, 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 or maybe you keep amplifying the state. You're jumping out of a it, fucking it, plane. It, it, it doesn't it, matter, man. It, we're we're uh, creatures of routine. I, I don't know. I, if I, get, that it, I get it. I mean, I, I get it. You're we are creatures of routine. Different glands in the brain pumping out yes. and stuff like that. But there, you never know. Like you could get unstable. I've been in a flat spin before, and like the where the wingsuit like does this like crazy cartwheel thing, and that. Bumps it up because you're like, how, <laughs> how am I, how am I going to get out? How of am I going to live yeah. at this yeah, point? Exactly. And and the the crazy thing about it is, um, it's 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 the exact opposite for me. Where it's I start panicking earlier now because my my muscle memory has told me that I need to be pulling because I pulled at 50 seconds when I was skydiving. 
And then I get in a wingsuit and it's a minute and 15 seconds. Like, right. oh, why aren't I pulling? So I'm actually pulling at a higher altitude. Oh, yeah. And then I get a bigger wingsuit and then it's two minutes. And I'm like, I'm freaking out at a minute yeah. and a half. Like, oh my yeah. God. Yeah, I still because have... that timing is, you don't you don't mess around with that timing. And so I just got this, this uh, Venom Power uh, wingsuit and it's a massive surface area wingsuit compared to the beginner ones. And uh, when we did the jump, uh, we were just like, balls to the wall flying and the faster you go the longer you're up there because you have a better glide ratio and we were up there for a good two minutes and i was like all right i'm gonna start getting ready like we'll break off and i'll i'll get ready to to pitch and it was like oh we're at nine thousand feet it's like we are like we are a third of the way through this skydive Wow. Whoa. And I'm like, must have been a cool feeling though. It was insane. Yeah. It was insane. And because because what happens is normally you you'll get out over the drop zone whenever you're skydiving, and then you'll just pull in relatively the same position in which you like got out of the aircraft. When you're wingsuiting, you're kind of navigating a certain route. And we were going so fast that we covered the route that we normally would, and we're like, oh wait we still have all this altitude so we're like having to like do turns and stuff like that and everything and it's like it's such a cool feeling to be out like three miles away from the drop zone and say hey all right i have to go fly to that that's cool <laughs> yeah like a bird yeah or well, a flying squirrel with style yeah i mean like the bird the birds you know they they, they got some more skills than me birds i'm just i'm following the style man yeah eagles hawks so it sounds falcons. so cool though you know that's the fastest animal on the planet right falcon? peregrine falcon how fast I don't know. Very fast. <laughs> you can't. Wing, you can't fast? Is that is that top five material? Very fast. That is top five material. Fast can we look this up? All right. Can all we right. look this up? What? How fast is a peregrine falcon? It is the fastest animal for sure. Okay. It'll dive like a motherfucker. Dive or like? I mean, no. that's that's where it gets that's the speed. That's top speed. Right? Now, for it's like a bullet. Coming whatever through the sky. Uh, you can take wikipedia with a grain of salt but it says the peregrine falcon reaches faster speeds than any other animal on the planet with a forming stoop which involves a soaring to a great height then steeply diving at speeds over 200 miles per hour whoa that's check crazy. it out check it out if, if right. wikipedia peregrine is falcon, right badass in this instance, all day <laughs> I mean, it's hunting other birds. Like, how cool is that? Yeah, that's warfare up there. That's a predator. If you're yeah. a little bird, <laughs> you don't want to see that falcon. Yeah. Coming Do you? You no. wouldn't. How you, would you? That's the coolest thing that you think about. <laughs> you think about in daily life. We don't have any any predators. You know, we have other people maybe that might screw around and hurt us, or get in a car accident or something. But imagine your daily life. It's being on the lookout for those talons. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously though, and the thing's ten times bigger than yeah, you. Yeah. We see. See, maybe it's not so crazy jumping out of planes. Maybe we, <laughs> you know, maybe we need to find a way to increase the survival <laughs> skills, instincts. I'm in. Okay. Yeah, All right. I'll watch from the ground. Yeah. Uh, uh -oh. Underestimated the neediness of George. He's like, it's it's time for me to eat, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Such a funny dude. So yeah, I mean, if you guys are here for a week, then we'll definitely like end up. This is just weird. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I'm in. If if we can make it work time wise with what we have to do, and what, oh, and what you have to do, we can make it work. What do you guys I'm, got going I'm, on? I'm, I'm, I'm in. Mean, anything, anything secret cool stuff. you want to talk about? All secret stuff. Yeah, you guys secret stuff. No, it's not all. Well, we don't. Well, is we it? don't. We don't know when when this is when the secret stuff is going to be happening yeah, uh, in comparison to when this launches. So when 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 gotcha. this episode goes live. So. Oh, you know what? That's true. That's, yeah. Uh, that's, so we're not exactly sure just yet. Yeah. But, okay. Uh, fine. <laughs> uh, you can yeah, you want to give it up? Or you want me to just give it out right now? You know, Worldwide exclusive right here? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> don't, don't, don't even do that. That's going to put pressure on me putting it up. <laughs> so like, thing, what do you mean? You're not going to put this no, up? No, 110%, but okay. I don't know when it's going to be, so okay. it might not be an exclusive. I mean, so feel free to tell people. But, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's probably going to be um, next week because this is Black Friday that we're filming this. Yeah. Uh, so I it, forget. It, that's... I forgot, we haven't done holiday anything really, so I keep forgetting that there's like special things happening and people are busy. You're zoned other. out, Dom. You're in the groove, man. Yeah. You're making stuff. This is real life. Real. This is real life. Good for you. We were having real life. Good for you. That sounds we were having dirty. real life? You're wanna, having? Wanna Wait have, a minute, how do you Austin, have real life? Austin, I want to have real life with okay, you. Okay, all right, guys. Whoa. Please, come on. Whoa. Listen, I know it's late. I know you had a few too many lime-flavored Perrier. Yeah, getting <laughs> getting tore up on the what Perrier. Are you, are you on number four Oh, my right God. Now? I just what, realized. What are you four. trying to prove over there? 
I can't believe you haven't had to go to the bathroom yet. Don's on a very special diet, so he's taking it out on those parodies. No, okay, you, you know, but the, I've never had this before you started drinking yeah. this. I've never tried oh, this Oh, really? Before. Ever? Ever. Wow. Ever. wow. Um, and I didn't realize that it's literally, there's nothing in it. <laughs> it's just water. Well, no, there's, that one has a little essence, a little flavor. Yeah, but there's literally... Yeah. Carbonation. No, no, there's no sugar. Sodium. No sodium. No sodium. No fat. A, li a no little carbs. bit of calcium. But yeah. that's uh, that's actual sor actual regular water sourced in France. It's the real yeah. deal. Yeah. No, no, no. That's what I mean. Yeah. And I've never had it before. And it's in some ways because I quit drinking soda. And in some ways, it's almost like an an O'Doul or something. Like, <laughs> it psychs you out, you know. And Dude, give, but that's uh, exactly what I told you. That's yeah. exactly what I told you. I drink this stuff instead of that as well. You but, still get the bite from yeah. the carbonation, no, so you can it, pretend. It's it's nice when it's like just ice cold. You ice know what I mean? cold. Like ice, ice so crispy. Yeah, yeah. Are we doing a commercial for Perry? <laughs> sponsor number one here on this podcast. Perry. I think we had a sponsor before. It, but yeah, I've been. We've been talking about stuff. It's impossible when yeah. you like stuff. You gotta yeah. talk about no, it. I mean, we we're like talking about GoPros earlier. Yeah. It was like it was like oh my god, like you like you you tout GoPros so much. It's like honestly, they've made my life so much easier. Yeah. So much easier. Yeah, and I it's mean, one I, thing. It's especially when you're talking about tools. I normally yeah, would have only. I you. normally would have only ever mixed something like this with alcohol. Um, A lot of people do that. But I know. But I don't. I don't drink, and so there was never any reason for me to ever try this. You know what I mean? Like, so I've never had the need to. to well, look at you, a convert. Yeah. Changing the game. Changing. <laughs> Stepping up Perrier a couple notches. Awesome. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> I, you know what? I think uh, since George is going crazy over here for attention and everything, we'll wrap it up. Um, for all of you guys uh, listening in, um, we really, I mean, it's, it's kind, of, it's kind <laughs> of hilarious. Probably going to frustrate the heck out of some people that we, one, for me, not talking about a lot of different guns, though I have shown <laughs> you guys a ton today. Yep. And yeah. then we didn't really talk about any phones or anything. No. I like yeah. that. Real life. It's real life. No, I, I, it's, I was, I was telling them the other day. I do another podcast sometimes. I, I'm, I'm on it occasionally, but it's, it's just about life. Like, like literally, the point is to not talk about tech. Yeah. And that's in itself is kind of freeing and just like totally different change of pace. It, it's, I don't know. I, I just, it's nice just having a conversation with people, and that's not about a freaking quad core this or two gigabytes that you know what i mean it's just it's nice to yeah i mean i, I guess live. after a while that can like can be like, all right cool yeah we can also give you a reason to have us back on this podcast that's true yeah. that's true so we can actually talk tech because we act but we, 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 he's making it sound like he doesn't even enjoy what he does no 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 not like that i'm just saying it's it's we don't get enough of these conversations like it's this. It's true. And you know what? It does it does give us uh, a, another excuse, too, because if uh, you guys do find time in the next week or something like that, I'll be around till I think, next, next Friday. And uh, one, we could go to the range. We could try out some of the different cool. weapon systems and stuff like that. We, you guys could... Uh, come back and talk about that sometime. Which ones you have preferences over and whatnot, and then uh, maybe go skydiving. And uh, look at this guy—he doesn't play around. It's not like come over and we'll have a barbecue. <laughs> yeah. It's just come over and we'll, like, we'll talk things. about some weapons. Which ones you guys like the best? We'll jump out of an airplane. Yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do. My, sometimes my dog, will, my dog will sniff out a couple of explosives <laughs> while you're over. All right, so pimp, pimp yourselves out, Lou. Uh, where, where can people find you? Where where you want them to go? Check you out. At? I am. On box therapy. That's how you can search me anywhere: Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, whatever yes. you choose, whatever you like best. Or you can just Google me. How about that? Google. Google. Ever it's heard of it? It's a thing. Yeah. Google it's a it. Thing. Google it. The number one response to any question on the internet. Oh, uh, so uh, my name is also. Lou. <laughs> what? <laughs> where, where can that Excuse find me? you, Austin? I, could, I couldn't quite do it. I couldn't quite do it. Uh, Austin Evans, basically everywhere. I do take videos. You're cool. basically everywhere. Basically everywhere. Good for you. Except yeah. Facebook. He's on SoundCloud. Everywhere too. else I don't want to be. Yeah. He, YouTube okay. and Twitter. Yeah. yeah, he's on Tinder. <laughs> Check him out on Tinder. <laughs> Check him out. <laughs> Decline him on Tinder. Oh. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Dom Esposito. You can find me uh, Mac Mixing anywhere. Just Google it. Like, right. You know, you, you can find it on YouTube, though. Any, anything doc whatever slash Mac Mixing. Is oh, right. also, before, before we take off, the project that we were talking about or not talking about may or may not have 
Richard in it. So maybe you may want to subscribe to Tom Box Therapy <laughs> if you're a fan of his. <laughs> which I guess you are because you're watching yeah, this. If you if you've made you're it two this hours far, deep. yes. If you <laughs> made it this far, far and you don't subscribe to Unbox Therapy, yes. you have such an immaculate retention rate, sir. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so yes, it, the thing that we weren't able to talk about will be featured will be featured there very shortly. So be ready. Unless we've already talked about it, in which case it's there. Oh man, it's becoming that that inception moment. <laughs> uh, so so thanks for tuning in to the first ever Full Mag podcast, guys. I really appreciate you uh, dealing with me and the technical issues. Uh, today I was using the SwitcherCast Pro, uh, and I'm probably going to try the Rico Live app next. If you have any suggestions, you guys have any experience with stuff. I don't know how long these podcasts will be in the future. I like the two to three hour casually talking mark. I'd really like to hear some feedback from you guys. Maybe some of the topics you'd like to see me address. Maybe you want to hear my opinion on it. And uh, maybe George's. So until <laughs> next time, you guys have a good one.